Okay, we are back. The warfare is real, but our God is realer. All right, I'm going to let you guys come back in the room. We are on part two as you guys come back in. Um, I had already given you guys two pointers, and I'm going to go ahead and pull those back up so that anybody that's catching the video from the beginning, I mean, that's catching it from here. <laughs> and don't do that, y'all. Don't just jump to the part two. But anybody that's come catching it from here, they can hear number one. And number two, but to get the explanation to number one and number two, go back to video number one. It is powerful. Um, the revelation you're going to get in here is going to absolutely change your life. I'm just pulling this back up as you guys come back in the room. No worries. I'm not going to go back and reteach all this. Um, I'm just going to read those two all over again or what have you. But we did number one. And these are the 10 lessons I wanted to make sure that you got from this whole John, uh, the Sean P. Diddy Combs and Cassie situation, and the other lady, the Joy, uh, I think her last name was McNeely, and then the Jane, the Jane Doe, what have you, some of the lessons of life. And like I said, this is one of those lessons that you want to make sure that you go and teach your children, uh, teach your children and your children's children. Because, you know, realistically speaking, especially if you're a single mother, you need to have somebody to teach your daughters. You, you got to have somebody to teach your sons as well. But somebody got to tell them. You got to teach them something. And I know you're trying to keep them as innocent as possible, but they're going outside to other people's kids and they're getting contaminated by these other kids that they're going out there. So whatever you don't educate them about, whatever you don't tell them, some other kid is going to give them a false narrative. All right. Some other kid is going to give them a false narrative. Some other kid is going to tell them uh, some foolishness and stuff like that. So be careful that you don't end up being one of those parents that you keep your child your child in the dark in the attempt to keep them innocent. And then they're going out there in the world and they're getting their education about life and gender and, and sex from the world. And they're getting there. And next thing you know, they're at home talking about some mom, you know, it's fluid. You know, there's a girl or a boy. OK, period, point blank. So we're going to go with the Bible says you want to make sure that you are educating your children. But do me a favor. Be sure to like, share. Prayerfully, everybody comes back in. Realistically speaking, that's the thing about videos is that if it cuts off, you know that there's a quite, a, quite a few people that are going to use that as an exit, an exit attempt. Not that they weren't enjoying. It's just that they're able to snap out of the revelation. You know, they're able to go back and think, oh, I need to get some sleep. Or, you know, I, I want to go do this and I want to go do that. So it's hard to get everybody back in the room once you restart a video. So we're going to go ahead and jump back in. And we were talking about uh, the, the 10 things that you were, the 10 life lessons you should be taking from this uh, scenario. And the first one was Ephesians 6.12. That was the first one. I'm going to go back and reread it again. I got too much oil, so I got to put it over here. But um, I'm going to go back and reread it again. Right, short attention span. And that, that's a real issue. It's actually... It's something, it, it's it's a stronghold. It's a stronghold. Um, what have you. So if they're part of this channel, our goal, our goal is to get them free or what have you. So we were doing number one with Ephesians 6, 12. Again, I'm not going to go back and give an explanation. You got to go back to the previous video, but I just want to make sure that we have the succession. So the first one was Ephesians 6, 12. The first three are going to be scriptures. And Ephesians 6, 12 reads, for, we, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. So your war is never against people. I don't care how many people you see and what people do and what people have done to you. You got to always come to understand that your war, your fight, all of the things that you've gone through was from a spirit. It came from an unclean spirit that was operating through that person or operating through those people. Number two was 1 John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't be a friend of the world. According to the Bible, if you're a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. And that is not a predicament or a position you want to find yourself in as an enemy of God, chasing the created thing more than the creator. God talks about people who are going to love or worship the created things more than the creator. You are a created thing. How silly would it be for me to worship this? How silly would it be for me to worship the universe? How silly would it be for me to worship the stars in the sky? How silly would it be for me to worship the thing that God created when I myself am, am a created thing? It is always better to worship the creator of that thing, the one who owns the, cat, the cattle on a thousand eels, the one who is uh, the God Almighty. So we got quite a few of you back in the room, but we're going to get back into it. So the third one was 1 first, first Timothy 
6, 9. I'm going to pull that up. This is the one we were going to right now. 1 Timothy 6 and 9. Thank you guys for coming back in. 1 Timothy 6, 9. Those who want to be rich, however, let me pull it up. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. I want to read that from the English Standard Version. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Like I told you, if the enemy can hold anything over your head, if there's any desire that you have, anything that you sit back and you want that thing more than the God or you want that thing alongside God, then you're in trouble. Your desire should always be to please God. It doesn't mean that you can't have a desire for nice things. It doesn't mean that you can't scroll through TikTok and see something or scroll through media, watch TV and see something on the TV and say, I don't want to have that, right? We can see a, t a television set. Uh, what we can see on our television set, we can see maybe it's a car that we say, man, I would love to drive that car, but you don't want to pull. You don't want to be driven by that car. You don't want that 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 thought to inundate your mind to the point where you will sin against God or you will go outside the will of God or you stop pursuing God to pursue it or you try to pursue God and it. You don't want that thing to become an idol. Your objective, according to God, is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And according to God, he'll give you the car. He'll give you the house. He'll give you the husband, the spouse. Or he'll give you the, the children. He'll give you everything that you desire, but it takes you seeking him. Now, seeking God requires dying to yourself. And here's the problem with that. This is why so many people go after the world is because Satan promises you wealth and riches and he promises it to you quick. But you got to give something in return. He wants your soul, which is your, your mind, will and emotions. He wants you to go into sin. He wants you to be real estate for the devil. He wants you to help him bind other people. That's what it means to go into the world is that you're not only in a system, but you become a part of that system. You become a functioning machine, whereas the enemy can sit back and say, hey, listen, um, I want you to be a demonic access door. Let's say you, you mess around, you go out here and let's say you enter into. Doesn't even have to be Hollywood. But it could be the car industry. You own a car dealership and you're like a successful car dealership owner, right? And you over here, you're killing it out here. You can have a measure of power and influence. And so what the enemy wants you to do, if the enemy knows he can trust you with that, the enemy wants you to do is use that power to get so intoxicated. This is why God said to give him the glory, right? Because that thing, you hear me when I say this, you cannot handle the glory of God. You can't handle God's glory and stay sober. You can't handle God's glory and stay sane. You just can't. So what ends up happening is you get that dealership and you're not giving God the glory. If you went up, you got it the wrong way. What ends up happening is you're tormented. Even though you got all that stuff and all that money, you're tormented by thoughts of what you want to do to people. You're tormented. And so the next thing you know, one, you can't trust people because once you become successful, once you become, you know, richer, uh, influential, realistically speaking, a lot of people are trying to get at you. A lot of people are trying to get attached themselves to you. A lot of people want to use your name or what have you. And that get right there. If you're not in Christ, if you don't know how to pray, if you don't have a relationship with God, a strong relationship with God, that within itself can be tormenting. That within itself can be tormenting because you're always having a question. What, 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 what's your aim? What you want? Do you really care about me? Or what have you? You're always having a question that. But the enemy wants to get you in that position so that he can use you to be a distribution system. I'm, I'm a, can I tell on the devil tonight? Like I said, a lot of people won't come back in. It is what it is. I'm, I'm, a, I'm still going to preach. The enemy wants to use you to be a, a distribution center for demons. He wants you to sit back. Okay. All of the stuff I went through as a kid and as a young lady, what the enemy was taking me through, it was training. I was in boot camp to become something. Okay. I was in boot camp to become a Jezebel. I was in boot camp to become a Delilah. I was in boot camp to become one of Satan's bottom bees. That I was a I was in boot camp. So what the enemy wanted to do was he wanted to break me. He wanted to change because the way that it works, the way that demons get more and more access is when you come to a conclusion. Every conclusion ends a season and starts a new season. Every conclusion. So after all of that stuff I had gone through, if I had taken a conclusion, these men ain't no good. They don't want no, they don't want to be treated right. When you try to treat them right, that's a conclusion. That's you putting a period where God put a comma. 
That's a conclusion. The minute you put a conclusion there, you just spoke a curse, the door locks, you end up stuck in that reality. That becomes your reality. The minute you open your mouth and you say something as a matter of fact, when you create a conclusion, you get stuck inside of that conclusion. What ends up happening from there is that that becomes your absolute reality. Then you start, when it becomes your reality, it changes the way you think. Because now, how do I survive in this conclusion? If this is now my world, if this is now my reality, if this is now how things are, how do I survive here? What do I do? Because I want to be married. I want to have children. I want to have all that. But if I'm saying that none of these men are any good, if I'm thinking that's my conclusion, then what that does is it turns me into a sinister woman. In order for me to get what I want, then I think now that I got to be sinister. That means that I got to go higher than them. I got to go lower than them. I got to go further than them. If, the, if they are dog, I got to be a bee. I'm trying to tell you how it works. If they're a dog, I got to be a bee. That's what the enemy will put in my mind. That's what the enemy will try to convince me of. Consequently, you move from the realm. We talked about this on the last one. Generalization. Was when you start saying these men, mm -mm. these men today, that's generalization. The highest form of trauma when the devil know he got you is objectification. That's when you get locked in that realm and you sit back and say, I'm going to do to them what they do to me. I'm going to use them. When you objectify a human, it means to turn them into an object. That means that I no longer see your humanity. You are nothing but a means to an end for me. If what I want is an orgasm, you a blow-up doll. If I want money, you are an ATM. If I want children, you're a sperm donor. If I want company, you are nothing but pure entertainment. Whatever it is I want, I will disregard you as a human don't care nothing about your soul, your happiness, and nothing. All I care about is getting to the end or get, uh, obtaining what I want. That's objectification. Believe it or not, go through the social media. You will find plenty of people who objectify other people. That is when that person has been turned over to a reprobate mind. That is when that person is a full-fledged Jezebel, a full-fledged narcissist. When they get to objectification, generalization, somebody's on the narcissistic spectrum and they're already over to the point where you can say that they have a disorder. That's generalization. You can hear it coming out of their mouths and hey, these men ain't none of these men. No, I'm telling you, it's men, it's black men, it's white men, it's Asian men, it's short men, it's tall men, it's men with three inch penis penises, it's the men with 12 inch penises, it's these women, those women, fat women, skinny women, light skinned women, dark skinned women, white women, black women, it's oriental women, it's just women. It, when people start thinking like that, that's generalization. That's generalization. Again, that means that they have not taken the time to take accountability for their role in their own pain. They don't yet realize that they have a type. They, or even if you introduce them to the truth, in many cases, because as God said, he said, I gave her a space to repent. It's talking about Jezebel. When, when somebody's a narcissist, the spirit of Jezebel has gotten in them. Okay? The spirit of Jezebel has gotten in them. In that, they don't take accountability. God gives them space to repent. Uh -uh, it's not my fault. Because, well, God, I hear what you're saying, but I was faithful to that man. I was faithful. They're angry because they gave an I They were they made an idol out of another person, and they gave offerings to their God, and they gave the offerings of their body. They gave the offerings of kind words. They accepted that person's offerings. They did all of that, and that person turned around and did not end, did not honor his end or her end of the bargain. And rather than understanding that that person did to them what they were doing to God, they just sat back to try because in their mind, they didn't realize that they made themselves equal with God. I hear what you're saying, but the reason I'm casting him down to hell, the reason I think that he should burn in hell is because he hurt me. God said, what about what he did to me? Well, that's between you and him. I ain't talking about what you did. You How you punish him is how you punish him. How I punish him is how I punish him. That is a demon. It is a demonic perspective. All right. We're moving on to number four. We're coming out the scripture stage. We're moving on to number four. Do me a favor, like and share. Um, I really want you guys to get this because there's a lot of lessons. And as you're seeing this thing unfold, ask yourself, like pray, ask the Lord, what revelation should I take from this? Because there's a lot up in this. It teaches you how narcissists move. It teaches you how Jezebel moves. One thing about it is I'm always intrigued but not necessarily in a good way about how Jezebel moves whenever they get to a high perspective, you know, they get to that high space because they show you what the low Jezebel is trying to accomplish. Y'all, 
It shows you what the jo the low Jezebel can't accomplish because they ain't got the money, the power, the prestige to do that. And the reason they out here acting crazy, it shows you what Jezebel would do if they get full control over you. If Jezebel gets full control where you surrender your will, Jezebel would beat the brakes off of you. Jezebel will rob you, rape you, and co completely control you. Completely will take you into captivity, will throw you out. If Jezebel had full control over you, it shows you. You look at a lot of these uh, stories that come out of, like with R. Kelly and all this other stuff. It shows what Jezebel would do if Jezebel gets custody of you, right? That's why the Bible says, man, you go have your own wife because this, hear me, brothers. I pray y'all are back out here. My brothers in Christ, hear me. Having a wife, an honorable way, and you get delivered, of course, get deliverance, get deliverance, please. Helps, helps majorly, especially as you move through the through life and if you let's say you own that that car dealership you're doing it having a wife helps majorly one she gonna get on your nerves she gonna talk noise uh, that's why the bible refers to women as her but two a lot of the things that 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 could potentially happen you will have safety with her if you got yourself a good kingdom woman you will have safety with her and you'll be able to look at those people in the industry and you'll be like oh you look at those people out there that are doing crazy stuff and you'll be like man I'm good. Whenever you open doors to me, however you open doors to me, God, I'm good. I'm sticking with her because I ain't got to go through none of this stuff. I don't know what that question means. Okay. I don't know what that question means. Any, now, number four, hear me. Number four, any power outside of God is demonic. You say, I want to be powerful. Where does that come from? Where does that desire come from? I want people to say yes, ma'am, to me. I want I, I want to be a president. I want to be a supervisor. I want to be a manager. I, I'm trying to ascend the ranks. I want to be this. I want to be that. Where does that desire come from? If you're not in Christ, or if you want that more than you want Christ, where does that desire come from? If you trace it in therapy. Trace the desire in therapy so you can heal from it because sometimes it can be the appetite of a demon. Sometimes it can be the appetite of a demon. Where does it come from? Sometimes it's just rejection. Spirit of rejection. When you went to school, maybe your dad wasn't there for you. When you went to school, you know, your dad was absent and you've seen these, these, these amazing stories, rags and riches and stuff like that. You see these amazing stories of people going out here and their father was, wasn't there when they were kids. Their father was absent. And then they went out there and they obtained a great deal of success and all of that stuff. And they got to flex and floss on their father. Or maybe when you went to school, they made fun of you. They didn't accept you. They outcast you. They didn't invite you to the parties. They laughed at you. They made fun of you. And you never truly healed from that. And so because you never truly healed from that, the enemy would use that to say, you, you know what? They, the, the whole thing was they were jealous of you or what have you. And then you end up with the look at me now complex. Meaning now you sit up there and now you're in the gym. Mm-hmm. I was a Teletubby in high school, but when I get, by the time I get done, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine because I never really was bad in the first place. We were just broke. We didn't have money. They had money to get their hair done. She could hide her ugliness because she has, she has somebody to put layers and stuff and like that. And nobody, but I had to sit up there. I had to work with whatever I had. I didn't have the nice clothes. I didn't have that. And so you get to a point where you're an adult. You start chasing power. You start chasing power. You start chasing success and notoriety. And it all comes from a hurt place. It all comes from a hurt place because now, and then you can't be trusted. You go into churches. It is so disheartening when people come into churches and it, it's every church has to deal with them. Every church has to deal with them, especially if, if you got a leader that is successful, that's gotten a measure of success, you know, power and notoriety. People flock to you like roaches in the projects. They flock. Because everybody feels like they're called to be on the same platform. It's like, hey, how you doing, Pastor? Scoot over. Hi, my name is Jane Doe, and um, I'm anointed. I mean, it started off, I had a dream when I was eight years old, and I dreamt that my uncle, um, my uncle P, you know, I feel like I heard of P before. Let me say, my uncle Umbrella, I, I, you know, my uncle Umbrella, I dreamt that, uh, he had died 
And then I told my parents, I went in the room and I was like, I drunk the uncle, I dreamed the uncle umbrella died. And they were like, go back to bed. And I just started crying. I went in the hallway, I slid down the wall. It was a real dramatic scene. And I just cried and, and the stuff. And the next thing you know, it was two weeks later, they told us the uncle umbrella had, you know, died. It started raining outside. And, you know, he got hit by a power line. You know, he saw it swinging. And instead of moving, uh, I don't know what it was. He decided to grab a hold of it. And Uncle Umbrella found out that why his name was Uncle Umbrella. Uh, so Uncle Umbrella died and he 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 no longer with us. Oh, what have you? And people think that that is a claim to, hey, that means I'm anointed and I'm a prophet. It could have been a spirit of clairvoyancy. It could have been a demon. So that spirit has to be tested. I, I got, I love y'all. I'm not saying that if that's your case, your story, that you're not anointed. I am saying, stop being so caught up in yourself that you will, you're not willing to hear whether or not that was from God. Stop being so caught up in yourself that you don't care. And I, I've said this before, and I'm going to move on from here. I've warned people who have prophetic calls and prophetic anointings on their lives with this. And y'all, y'all see me rubbing my hands because I got a dry patch right up in the center. But, um, I've warned uh, prophets and prophetic people because prophets and prophetic people, a lot of times the enemy gets you like this. You end up having a dream and it could be a dream from God. It could be a warning dream, right? You dream somebody die or something bad happens. Rather than interceding, which is what God wanted you to do, rather than praying against it, you just start telling everybody what you dream. Oh, I dreamt that the, you know, the Empire State Building, you know, it caught fire and it blew up and all these people, this happened and that happened or what happened. And um, people, you know, they say that and they don't intercede. Okay. But uh, they, they say that and they don't intercede. And the reason they don't intercede, because this is the narcissism. This is what the devil does. Through rejection, he makes you want to be right. Meaning you really don't care that people are going to die. You really don't care. All you care about is just, I told some people, so now they can, they can, prove, they can prove that I'm a credible prophet. Rather than saying, in the name of Jesus, and going to people, hey, can pray with me because God showed me this. Going to people that, that have you know, intercessory partners and stuff like that, going to your church and praying. A lot of times you get to the point where you start advertising. Then you just sit back in your counter just waiting on it to happen so that you can say, see, I'm a real prophet. So a lot of people had to die. That's your altar. A lot of people had to die just for you to prove to the world that you're a prophet. That is never the will of God. If God shows you something, especially something like that, he's not doing that to, to, to give credibility to your office. Many cases, the credibility will come over time. He'll give the affirmation, the confirmation, everything you need. But it's for you to intercede. He'll task I'm going to try it. I got something in there for feet. And I, I was thinking about that. What have you? Yes, you can intercede to stop it. Anytime you have a dream like that, God wants you to stop it. God is showing you the plans of the enemy. Unless God said, I'm going to bring this past. And even then, you can still pray um, because this is what um, Abraham did, right? Um, he was praying for uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You can pray. You can intercede. But it is the heart of God that you begin to intercede. You're most welcome. All right. Number four was any power outside of God is demonic. When you see people flexing around with power and you're like, I want to be like that. I want to be successful like that. I want to have this and I want to have that. If it's power that came outside of God, that's demonic power. And if you are auditioning for demonic power, then demons are going to come and they're going to tell you what route and what role that you're going to have to play. Like what route you have to go, what role you have to play in order to get there. And they're going to take you deep and dark. Remember I told you there are layers to this. There's levels to this. Demons will take you deep and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. They'll see how far you're willing to go. And how far you're willing to go in the deep is going to determine how high they're willing to raise you. Can I, can I tell them the devil? How far you're willing to go into the deep will determine how far they're willing to raise you. So if they come across somebody like Sean P. Diddy Combs and they see that desperation in a young man and they see that he's sitting there looking at all these morals and have all this success and he has in his heart, I don't care what I got to do. I don't care. And when you get that power outside of God, hear me, it's intoxicating. It, cre it creates, it turns you into an ag of sorts. And even when they're in that industry, because they're so infiltrated, they're, they're doing the will of the enemy. They're preaching their gospel. And it's not good news, but they're, they're, they're leading people astray. When they're in that industry and they're doing that thing, it's, it's not only intoxicating that they're being tormented by those spirits. They're being tormented. And so they got to go find some type of relief. 
See, us, we can go to the Holy Spirit. We can go into prayer. We can go into worship. We can repent. We can get delivered. But when you're in the world and you have no relief, you got to turn to other stuff. You got to turn to other stuff so you can have the stuff. You can have the house. You can have the car. You can have the bad bitties. You know, you can have all of that. I said bitties. I know it came out real fast, but you can have all of that stuff. But what good is it to have it and lose your soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. What good is it? For if I, now, I can chase God, which I am. I can do the will of God, which I do. And God can empower me, which he has. God can turn around and give me stuff, 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 stuff. But the stuff, is, while it's, it's cool and I like to have the stuff and, you know, I sit back and I'm like, oh, I want to buy this. I want to get this. Oh, what have you. The stuff doesn't have me. I have peace because my trust is in him and I love him. That He's my everything. Somebody in the world doesn't have that. Because when they get the stuff, I'm going to tell you, stuff makes you, it gives you a temporary high. It's, 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 when I got this, good God, when I got this cell phone, this is the iPhone 12. When I got this, this is my very first iPhone, right? It's time for me to upgrade. Thought about upgrading. I'm trying to debate on whether I want to upgrade because 15 don't seem to be too far up. Plus, I heard some stuff that they doing to a lot of those kids in Africa, which I don't want to have any part in it. I don't want to throw my money into it if they're going to be doing evil to kids to trying to get titanium or whatever it was they were trying to get cobalt i don't remember but i'm saying that to say when i first got it i'm like yay my first iphone i went and got myself a second phone mm, four three four five six months ago and i got the google pixel 7 now the eight out but um i got the google pixel 7 guess how long i was excited about it Guess how long I was excited about it? Not even a day. That's the stuff. That's the power of stuff. Stuff would be like, yay! Uh, all right, I'm going to buy something else. Tell me if I'm lying. I want to buy something else. Y'all, can I tell you a truth? I'm going to move on. I don't even know if I want that. I don't even think I want that Google Pixel no more. You know why? Because what took my interest out of the Google Pixel? I'm showing you human nature. I put my my humanity on display for you. When I got the Google Pixel, I was excited about it. Then I got to church, and one of my tech friends, you know, I, I'm sitting up there, and I'm like, look, every time I get some new techie, you know, we always chatted up or what have you. He was like, did you see the new flip phone? I said, flip, and it's a phone that flip and fold and all that. And I saw somebody with one. I was like, I want that. I have genuinely considered sending that phone back so I can get the flip. Right. It was. It, was, it really was less than 30 minutes. I'm showing you, for those of you, because I grew up broke. I grew up in poverty. Stuff is just yay over it. Yay. I want this. I want that. The only thing I can say that doesn't lose that so fast is a car because I got my car out there and I'm, I'm still excited about it. But, 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 but I want another new car. Sorry. I'm showing you humanity. I want another new car. I'm like, I don't want to be driving. That, that, that's a luxury car. I don't want to be driving that around, putting all those miles on that. So I want, I want another new one. I got a Nissan Rogue as well. But it don't have all the the, 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 the stuff in it. That, that, that car, that car is for me. So when I'm driving, the, the, the Nissan Rogue is a Milo mobile. The, he gets to travel with me when I'm driving in that. Oh, what have you. It don't have all of the, the, the tech stuff. and it, it don't have all that. I'm showing you human nature. I'm showing you human nature. If that stuff has you, the enemy has you. It's just stuff. Now, that was any power outside of God is demonic. Any power. Any you want I want authority. I want to become the boss. Ask yourself why. I, I, I want Tiffany. I feel like I, you know, I want to get into a, a competition. I, I want to I want to body build. I, I hear you. I want to body build. You know, I, I I want to go out here and I just really okay, sis, I hear you. But and that's good. There's nothing wrong with you deciding to go that route. But please ask yourself why. 
this is why I ask God to reveal my motives to me. Me, I, me one of my prayers is the Lord, Lord, reveal my motives. My other prayer is Lord, purify my motives. I don't want impure motives at all. I don't want to have any impure motive toward anybody. I, I don't want to have an impure motive toward God. No, you shouldn't feel bad for having nice things at all. It's not even about being flashy. It's about if I get this stuff, am I trying to make people jealous? You know, and realistically, these people, people, you can't stop people from being jealous. So I'm not trying to tell you to avoid it. It's not even about that. It's you always want to look for the core or the root of it. Like, why? Always ask yourself why. I interrogate myself. I say, okay, that's nice, but why? That's nice, but why? Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that there's nothing lurking there that I'm feeding. Because the more you feed it, it's going to grow. And I don't want to feed it and it is big or what have you. I want to make sure that that thing, you know, if it's something evil in there, it needs to go. All right. Number five, Satan gives people power and influence so that they can bring more people under his influence. We talked about that, so we're not going to spend a lot of time there. Satan gives power, people power and influence so that they can bring more people under his influence. If the enemy knows he can trust you, remember I told you he wants to use you as a distribution center for demons. He want, he Demons need houses, right? They got love. They got people. They're, they're demons out here that are displaced. They're disembodied. They're displaced because their host died. Or they host could be somewhere, you know, just pretty much they didn't, they didn't, they didn't ran that person crazy. That person locked up somewhere, even though they demonize need deliverance and stuff like that, they kind of useless to the demon. The demon is just really having so it, it's like, okay, I can use them as a hotel. I come and run a mad and all this other stuff. But demons want to go out there and they want to get more power from people. They want to go out there, they want to do stuff. So their demons are demons look to other demons so that they can find a house. If you don't have kids that they can go into or your kids already infested with some stuff, demons look to other demons so they can get houses. That's why you got guys out there that they call F-boys. That's why you got promiscuous women. Promiscuity is nothing but a demon that's saying, hey, listen, it's okay, it's a demonic real estate agent. Sorry. Promiscuity is nothing but a demonic real estate agent. It's just a demon saying, I want more souls. And it's a demon talking to other demons. Hey, I can get you a house because the house I look in, that I live in, he fine. Or the house I live in, she look good and she conceited. She broke and she got daddy issues. She thinks she's God's gift to men and she thinks every woman hates her because she's beautiful. She's conceited, prideful, and narcissistic. She, she, can, pull it, she can pull men like crazy. So I can get you some real estate. But I need to be king over your door. Oh gosh. I need I need to be over your brigade of demons. I can get you real estate. I can get you in, I can get you in a house. I can get you in right there. Never said I can I can get you somewhere to stay. You 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 disembodied because you were in this lady and the lady kicked the bucket and her child kicked the bucket before her, and you ain't got nowhere else to go. And the one person that you could go into already full of demons. Oh, what have you? So you will have to take a lower place. I can get you. I can get you into a house. So that demon is gonna put in her mind, you so fine. You know that man you with. He ain't rich enough for you. Why are you wasting all your finest on him? Why are you wasting all your good years on him? When there are men out there that got way more money, they got way more, and they be they'll do anything for you. So now she look at that dude and she start thinking. I, I, I don't tell. She tells her friend. She says, "I don't even know anymore because like he made six figures, and it's like all this. <laughs> I would get all this to six figures. I think not. I'm thinking. I'm thinking real. I'm thinking about asking him for a break." I'm thinking about asking him for a break. You got somebody else you're looking at? There's this one dude, like, he be over there, like, in the rich section of town, right? And, you know, I work over there because I be working for them old ladies and stuff like that. I go over there and, um, you know, I, I do nursing and stuff. And, you know, he always speaking to me. And so, girl, you should see his house. He should see his house. You should see his house. His house is big. He got this and he got that. Girl, I'm trying to tell you. 
he 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 spoke to me the other day and I I can tell that he he really getting close to you know really asking me out because he came over there he asked me my name and stuff like that and he asked me if I was in a relationship and I told him it's complicated it's her demon looking for another house demons in her it is whatever demons looking for another house It's setting that man up that man could be a 63 year old uh retired millionaire whose wife went on to glory at some point and that demon ain't got access to him that demon says well you know what that's a, you know him being rich next thing you know he messing with her and she just opened him up for other demons demons create real estate all right i tell you that's why the computer was acting up, y'all. The devil don't want me to tell the truth on him. All right. Number six. Satan's core or primary objective is control. Satan's core or primary objective. Everything Satan does, everything demons do is centered around control. It all centers itself around control. If you ever really want to see, like if you're you're having a problem with a person and the person has been doing something wrong or what have you, think control. All you got to do is look for the control in it. This is how you know for the devil. So all you got to do is look for the control in it. How is it? I, 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 let's say, for example, I talked about the seesaw effect in um, another one. Let's say you got this cousin. Every time you look around, she does. You're like, are you okay? You know, I'm, I've had better days. You're like, what's going on? I just, I haven't, I haven't been feeling my best lately. And um, I haven't, mean, I have, you know, just not the, the best energy. And I, I know, like, I know I need to go to the doctor, but I don't know. I'm just kind of scared. And then um, just found out my, boyfriend of seven years has been um you know acting like he wasn't in a relationship so he got that and then now they're talking about my job and that seems to be on the line uh got into it with my mother the other day and okay every time you see her cuz of what's going on I bought a brand new pack of ink pens. I had them on my desk at work. And I come back. I went to the bathroom. And it, it could have been between, I don't know when I went to the bathroom, when I went on my lunch break. But they gone. Who steals a whole pack of pens? Like, cuz, how, how much they cost? If, if it's a pack of pens, they're probably cheap. Um, Probably 19. You a lot of things said, what does the, the pen say, Bizzle? Had to eat, they had these type of tops on you lying big is that called big you lying i bought you another it's like 3.99 i'll buy you another stop trying to lie like it was 20 dollars. but people like that where's the control in that she will never say that she is okay or she's actually in a better predicament than you because by doing that she gets to evade it she gets to evade responsibility that means that puts that puts her in a place where you always have to do. If you cooking, you got to do the cooking. If, if, if you're on the phone, you're always having to think about her. Like you can't talk about the good things going on. You're like everything centered. Everything is centered around her. You always got to look for the control. Always look for the control. It's always. Sorry, I love y'all, girl. You gonna take that man to court? Yeah, because you know he's talking about some. He he want to give me. $782 a month for a child. You know how much a kid eats? Since I hear you, but you know, just try. He's trying to be an active father and all that. It because you ain't got no kid. No, 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 it ain't that. I just see a decent dude that's trying his best. I would say don't try to fold him in half. Just try to see if y'all can have a decent enough relationship where you can say, hey, I need a little extra this month or I need this. Could you get the kids some shoes or could you get them some shoes? Yeah, no, nah. because, you know, he, he, he just, he act like, you know, he can't do nothing for the kids. Okay, wait, hold up. Look for control. Hey, 
What's changed in his life? Like, you seem to be okay like a month or two ago. I've been thinking about this for a while, so don't even go there. I, I feel you. But what's changed? Ain't nothing changed. I mean, he got that girlfriend. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Is she new? Yeah, I mean, she been, they've been together for like three and a half months. What's your point? Ain't no point. But, but she, yeah, they've been together for three and a half months. But from what I heard, girl, he, he talking about shopping for wedding rings. So now you're trying to financially cripple him so he can't afford to get her a wedding ring. Look for the control. Yeah, they are. If, if the person keep doing that, it's, it's the spirit of control, spirit of witchcraft and control. So the objective is so that you can never ask them to make the ham. You can never talk about yourself and your success. You can never uh, do much of anything. Everybody has to center around them. Everybody got to be sem sensitive around them. Everybody got to talk about, you know, and everybody got to help them out. So they never have any responsibility. Um, and just basically they get to play the victim or what have you. So, and it's insensitive for you to say, hey, could you cook the ham for Thanksgiving? It's insensitive for you to sit back and say, I just went and I got a promotion on my job. It's insensitive for you to say, I think I'm at the love of my life, but they just said they just broke up with somebody. So it's always now it's control. It controls what you say. It controls what you do. So now it's a lot you can't do or say whenever you're around her. It's a spirit of control. It's a spirit of control. But Satan's core or primary objective is control. Right. Satan's primary objective is control. Everything that a demon does is centered around control. Even a man looking at you saying, I want you to have my baby. It's control. Sorry. I know some of y'all got caught up in those. He had them, the, the, the bedroom eyes or maybe he had the droopy, sleepy eyes or maybe he had the cat eyes or maybe he had the cross eyes or Maybe he had the cock eyes or maybe whatever type of eyes he had. You got caught up in those eyes and you thought about giving a kid to that dude because he's standing over you. He's hovering over you, right? Because we like him taller than us. He hovering over you and you looking up and he looking down at you and he says, give me a, give me a kid. I want you to have my baby. And you sit there, you get flattered. Send this to your daughters. Like and share. If you haven't done it already, like and share. That's your seed. You getting flattered, not realizing when a man is not married to you and asks you to have your ch his child, it has everything to do with control. When a woman is not married to you and she wants to have your kid, it has everything to do with control. Sorry. And you and a, you got yourself a girlfriend and y'all doing some stuff and that y'all ain't supposed to be doing. And she locked them legs up on you when she know you about to go to go there has everything to do with the desire to control the narrative. Sorry. Sorry, it has everything to do, because if I get if I have your kid then you may stick with me. You, you're probably going to marry me or stay with me. Either way, you're going to be a part of my life. So you can't leave. You're going to be a part of my life. And if you try to leave me, I'm going to use the kid. I'm going to get child support from you. And if you're crazy about your kid, I will turn around and use your kid as a pawn to control you. All right. Number seven, every industry has doors that are guarded by angels or principalities. Every industry, every industry, the car industry, uh, housing industry, music, uh, television, church, every industry, there are angels. There's something at that door. I'm, I'm talking spiritual. There's something at that door. It's going to be an angel or a demon. And of course, we said principalities. And it is really principality comes from principles, right? It's a spirit that's, that rests or sits on principles. But the angel can be a, an angel is a principality. So if it's a good golly angel, it can be an, an angelic principality. If it is, and so let's say, for example, around our church, you come to my church, you probably gonna see angels up in there. One of my sisters in Christ, she walked up to me one day when we were in church, or what have she serves or what have. So she, we're, we're all serving or what have you. And she walked up to me and she said, 
I see four. Is it weird that I see four like really tall creatures? But she said, I, I think they're angels, but they don't look like angels. And I said, well, angels don't look like the way we think they look. They don't look like humans or what have you. And she was like, she tried to describe them to me. And then she went back on post. And um, Sister Danielle, thank you. I love me some you, beautiful lady. Thank you so much. So she went, she went, she got back on post. And when she got back on post, I went, I thought about, I had just saw a video, just saw a video about a day or two before on TikTok where it was showing how the angels look. And so I did a search on TikTok to see if I could find it. I found it. I cut the volume off and I walked down there by her and I was, I played the video and she stopped the video. She said that right there. That's what I see. She said, I see four of them. I see four of them. She said they're like over there, like pillars. It's four of them up in here. There's four of them up in here. What is guarded by principal? Is these are principal principalities, right? These are principalities. These are godly principalities. Then you have some doors that are going to be ungodly principalities. You have some that are going to be ungodly principalities. Sorry. Some that are going to be ungodly principalities. Ungodly principalities are places like clubs you go into. There are going to be demons up in there. There are going to be unclean spirits up in there. And those unclean spirits, what they're going to do is they're going to sit back and they're going to say, you know, they're going to try to guard and then they're going to have people. Now, when I talk about the doors, the doors are going to be people. When you walk into a space, there are going to be principalities that are governing that space. There are going to be principalities that will either keep you out or welcome you in. There are going to be principalities, right? So every industry has doors. P. Diddy was a door. He has been a door. R. Kelly for a long time has been a door, right? But they were guarded by principalities, allegedly. I can't, I mean, obviously you can see that, but they were guarded by unclean spirits. That means that they're driven by unclean, they're driven by demonic principles. They're dri driven by demonic principles. Sorry. It's a sad thing. We have people coming on here and they will just play in the comment section if you let them. And I know uh, to the moderators, thank you. I appreciate y'all. I know I'm just, I'm moving fast over here. But um, they are guarded by principles, right? Every, every last one of them is guarded by, if you go into a church, a church is going to have angelic principalities, but you got to bet your body, 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 by golly, wow, there are going to be demonic doors up in there as well. And demonic doors will typically be people that have been there, that have been there for a while, who have ungodly perspectives, who are competitive, who feel like you are a threat to what they're doing or what have you. And so they will try to shove you out. That is demonic. You don't allow that to happen. You, you sit there, you stand your ground. They will try to shove you out. But every industry has doors that are guarded by angels and principalities. And a lot of times what you will find yourself doing is you will find yourself knocking on those doors. I mean, trying to build relationships with people because you're trying to get, even though you're standing in the building, you're standing in the uh, the office, the church, the uh, whatever you're trying to accomplish, even though, but you're looking at all these doors, all these doors that would allow you to get the relationships, to get access to, right, gatekeepers, all these doors that would allow you to get access. You're looking at all those doors. But realistically speaking, if you walk, if you knock on the wrong door, then something ungodly is going to answer that door. And it's only going to let you in if it, if it can get you to do what the works of the enemy. So if it's ungodly, you're going to have to do something ungodly to get in. If it's godly, if it's got, if it's ungodly, you're going to have to do something godly to get in. All right. If it's ungodly, you're going to have to do something ungodly to get in. If it's godly, then you're, you're coming in. But those angels are going to watch. If you come and you try to do anything dark or demonic, then the, the angels, the angels of God are going to protect that industry. They're going to protect it from every unclean spirit. So every industry has doors that are guarded by angels and principalities. We see this case with, like I said, Sean P. Diddy comes, a door, a door. He's going to be a distribution center for unclean spirits. Unclean spirits are saying that if you're, if you're going to try to come through him, then that means that every spirit attached to him is just like a, a high ranking witch or high ranking sorcerer. Every spirit attached to him is going to say, hey, what is he or what is she going to do for me? How can we use them to promote our agenda? If you're not coming here thinking you're going to promote a Christ agenda. You're not coming here thinking you're going to promote Christianity or Christ. No, you're going to have to promote a different agenda. You're going to have to promote a different agenda. All right, number eight. 
Satan loves to attack women because we are a direct connection to heaven. You heard me talk about this before, but there are people on here who've had, who haven't heard this. Satan loves to attack women because we are a direct connection to heaven. After all, spirits have to enter our wombs to come into the earth. Spirits have to enter into the womb of a woman. So demons don't have bodies. They need bodies, right? You already know that demons can pass through generational curses. What demons do is what a demon wants to do is it wants to travel. And it makes it a lot easier to get into a child if it can just pass through the mother, if it can pass through the mother or the father. So demons love to attack women because you are the only entity women are the only entity our wounds are a connection between heaven and earth so a spirit has to enter into our womb get into flesh and come out and so the enemy because he sees that direct connection this is why sex trafficking is so big right now this is why the enemy go, goes out of his way um one in three women i think has been sexually abused at, at some point in her life i think it's higher than that but i could be wrong but this is why the enemy goes out of his way to attack women. Also, to the brothers, hear me. One of the biggest reasons that the enemy loves to attack men is not just because you represent the authority of God, because if he can take you, he can steal your women. Okay. Let me see this. Matthew 12, 29. Or else, how can, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind a strong man and then he will spoil his house? We use that principle in deliverance because in deliverance, we're going to bind a strong man up so we can get to the rest of the demons. But demons also use that to get into your house. A, a demon understands. Oh, man, I want to preach this. A demon understands if I can distract you with another woman, if you got a wife at home, a praying wife, a good kingdom wife, and you are a good kingdom man, it's hard for me to get in if I'm a demon because where two or three are gathered in his name, God is in the midst and two can put 10,000 flight. So in unity, we powerful. So the enemy understands that if I can bind a strong man, if I can bind the one that's covering his house, the head of the house, if I can bind the head, if I cut off the head, the body can't function. The enemy understands that. So the enemy understands if I can send a beautiful or beautifully wrapped demon your way. Sorry. If I can send a beautifully wrapped demon your way with, with a nice butt and she's so bra she's so braggadocious about her butt, it, it's all real. It ain't a BBL. It's all real. Just like my hair. She's sitting up there and she's exalting her meat. She's exalting that because she was wrapped in, she's wrapped beautifully. That demon want demons love real estate like that. Demons like real estate like that. That demon know if I can get in her, and I can I can use her, and especially if I can catch you at a time where you know maybe you'd have got a little bored in your marriage thing. There you'd have got comfortable. You're not even bored. It's just comfortable. You know, it's it's just the y'all y'all doing the same stuff, right? Sister Yolanda, you're awesome. Thank you, beautiful. God bless you. You know, it's nothing. This girl can come and introduce you to a drug that you had a long time ago. And that's called being in love. That serotonin, the dopamine. They come and give you another hit of that because that stuff feels good, right? So you and your wife, you're comfortable, you're good, y'all straight. That demon will send a beautiful woman on your job. I'm trying to tell you. He will send a beautiful woman on your job. And you know what? She'll be down to earth. She'll be cool. She'll be collected. She'll be over there. And let me tell you what makes a man comfortable. And you tell me if I'm lying. Let me tell you how a beautiful woman to get, get y'all. You could be in a break room and you eat. She come over there. She always joking with you. She said, what you eat? Let's say you, you your wife made you a salad or you got yourself a salad. She take her fork and stick it in your food. Wait, come on, come on. Why ain't nobody scared of you? Right then and there, she just connected herself to you. That's right. I mean, you hear Milo say hallelujah. I love you too, baby. She stick up fork in your food. Women, when a woman is seducing you, all she has to do is show some level of comfortability around you. Y'all want to know the truth. That's why the enemy wish he had killed me. He tried, please. Trust me. Trust me. He tried. When I keep when I think about the story, he tried. 
If she has to show, all she has to do is show a measure of comfort, comfort around you. That make you tell me if I'm lying. It make you feel safe. Make you feel some type of way. Make you feel good. She'll take her fork and stick it in your food. She'll take her fork and be like, "What's that? If you drinking something, she'll get it from you." Give me some, boy. Let me get a little bit of it. I ain't gonna push it in my mouth. Drink it behind you. They're still backwash. They're still backwash. She'll take something. She'll do that. Or catch, check this. If she comes to your house, y'all want me to tell the truth. If she comes to your house, she'll take off her shoes and walk around barefoot on your floor. And she'll make sure her, her toes are nice, pretty, painted and all that. Because that makes you feel some type of way. It's, like, it's, it's not just like that in America. It's like that in many cultures. You feel connected to people when they start showing comfort to you. If she's sitting up there and she wakes red round on her shirt, and you like, she's like, oh, I ruined my shirt. And you say, I, you can put on one of my shirts. It does something to you when you watch her shirt. That's, y'all, don't, y'all don't even know how women be plotting against you. Y'all don't even know how women be plotting against you. You don't know. That's why you got to have... I'm telling you, I had a son, he would be blessed. It, it, it does something to you. Now she's walking around your house barefoot wearing one of your shirts. That's sexy to you. <clears throat> Sorry. That's sexy to you. You're, you're attracted to that. So now you just set up there. Let's say she's not at your house because you're a married man. That demon wants to get your house. Your demon's thinking generations. So that demon is looking at your wife because your, your wife is a baddie. And the demon knows if I can use her, I can, if I break her, if I can use you to hurt her, I can, I can put her out there. And then your, your, your kids, your daughter over there, oh my goodness, I can really break her. Her, her stepdaddy, I can get a stepdad up in, her, up in here. That's how, I'm telling you how the devil thinks. I'm telling you how he thinks. I'm, I'm looking at your daughter. The mother, I can break her. And then, you know, on, on the journey to breaking her, I could bring a man up in here that'd be perfect for your, your wife. That got, got that has an illicit attraction to children. I can destroy your whole family. And all it took for me to do was to bring somebody up to your office who was demon demonized and was beautiful. She was a beautifully wrapped demon. And now she comes up on your job. And let's say you and she in your office one day, and she come up in the evening. And she starts showing comfort around you. It's a trick. She starts showing comfort around you. She come up in your office and she put her foot up under her, her butt. And she eat, she eating a little uh, honey bun. Oh, gosh. She eating a little honey bun. She put up, she sit up on like, real comfortable. You're like, what you doing? That car, you, you attracted to that. What you doing? She's going to mess with the protector in you. She's going to mess with the provider in you. Because whenever a man feels like he has to protect something, he'll even protect it from his wife or the provider. So she ends up, she's eating that thing. She drop it on her shirt. She said, I got a meeting with Mr. Sanchez at 3 OMG. I ain't got, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, well, cover your blazer. Well, look, it's red. I knew I should have got strawberries on this day. Good God. And he said, look, I'll tell you what. You what? I, I got a blazer. You small. Just put my blazer on and cover it up. They won't know the difference. You sure? He he go in. He get the blazer. He put this on. She put it on. She got you. Slowly but surely, she starts to steal your heart from your wife. Slowly but surely, she starts doing things, and it's little subtle things that draw you in sexually. Say it's little subtle things that will draw you in, like coming up in there and putting her leg up, putting her leg up under her. Little subtle things that'll make you see her thigh. Little subtle things that'll make you see her feet. Her feet look suckable. They look pretty and they look all manicured and baby like and stuff like that. It's little subtle things that she'll do to get your attention. She'll draw you away because how you gonna spoil a strong man's house unless you first buy a strong man? Sorry. Y'all, I got a book called uh, Devil Bait, High Heels and Spiritual Warfare. I want to turn that into a movie. I deal with that in that movie. When I put that out there, I'm going to be coming for some funding. Y'all, I'm telling you, invest in it, invest in it. When I put it out there, whenever I'm ready to shoot that thing, I'm telling you right now. But she will play with your mind. 
she will play with your mind. And once she does that, she will take you slowly and emotionally away from your wife. And your wife, in many cases, will start doing her job of trying to defend her household. So she's going to be arguing at you. And so now she starts looking like the villain while the other girl, she looking, she going to come in your office one day and cry. You don't understand. No, you don't understand. I didn't ask for these. He asked for these thighs. I ain't asked for this. You don't have one of the most narcissistic grants. You get sucked into that. Now you feel like you got a protector. Where was I? Satan loves to attack women because we are a direct connection to heaven. After all, spirits have to enter our wombs to come into the earth. She will pull you away from your family. And that's the reason the enemy wants to attack a woman is to turn her into that. To turn her into someone who destroys households. To turn her into that. And then if he can pull you away, he can, he can pervert your wife. She's going to be hurt. She's going to be mad. She's going to be frustrated. The one person that she really trusted. She'll, and so now she won't, she won't hurt you. See, the enemy wins with that. He, he wins with that. And the whole time, he's looking at your kids. The whole time, because he's thinking generations. Because he got to make sure that when you die and your wife die, that he has somewhere else to go. I love that. Sex with your mind. I love it. Definitely. Definitely. Where were we? Number nine. You are responsible for any principality or power that you empower through your viewership or your financial support. This is where I, I, I still love you. If you are financing a demonic person in the music industry, and when I say demonic person, I'm talking about somebody like Beyonce, people who are promoting things that are anti-Christ, and you, you're promoting it through your viewership or your financial support, you're just as guilty. You can't be a friend of the world and the enemy of God's. That's what he said in his word. And there's no way of getting around it. You can't religify it and you can't come up with some other. See, it'd be y'all religious folk. No, it's your Bible. And if you hate the word, you hate God. If you hate the word, you hate God. Realistically speaking. If you hate the word, you hate God because God is his word. Jesus is the living word of God. You can't get around it. If you support anything demonic, if you sit up here and you listening to Beyonce talking about plugging her messes with pages from the Bible and you out here like, don't get that album. You supporting that. Sorry. Your dollar, that's your tithe. You just tithe it to Beyonce. Sorry. And it'd be the ones that put their money into the world that, that, that come up against the church, that come up against Christians and Christian artists that are promoting Christian artists singing music about God. Well, I got to pay them. You pay the world. So you think they're supposed to go in the studio and they're supposed to do everything for you for free? You're the free 99, but then you're going to take that money that you don't want to give to them and you're going to be up there making it rain on the world? And you wonder why... You don't want to honor God's people. You will honor the world. And then you will complain about God's people. You will honor the world. The world come out here and they talk about kill yourself, uh, be a hoe. You have eight kids and don't know now which, who the daddy and which one. You got a whole, you got nations in your house. Your one little kid look Chinese. The other one is dark as all, way, all outdoors. The other one over here look like he's about from India somewhere. The other one over here is, is clearly... Uh, mixed between white and black. He's a Caucasian little boy. He even looks white. You got all these nations up in your house. But then you turn around and you you throw throwing and all this music kept with those kids to create those kids. But then you come into the church and you tight lip your booty? You come into the church and you like, I don't understand. They got an album coming out. Why they got to pay? Why? Why I got to pay for the album? You will, find, you will always finance your God. I'm going to say that out loud. You will always finance what you believe. 
who okay the bible says it this way wherever your treasures are that's where your heart is wherever your treasures are that's where your heart is if your treasures are in the world and you come into the church you are an enemy of the church which is why you complain against the church you talk against leadership it's because your heart is still in the world you couldn't tell me i'm lying your heart is still out there your heart is still out there and all of that stuff your heart is still there because when you come into the church you get tight booty when you come into the church you get upset you get offended during an offering because your treasure is where your heart is if you want to know where your heart is my heart right with you got where your money going where's your treasure where's your time going just wait. follow the trail of your heart follow the footsteps of your heart that's where your treasure is lord am i really saved am i really surrendered to you where is your heart god says they draw nigh me with their mouths but their hearts are far from me look for your heart where is my heart am i listening to music that tells me to to go out here and sin against god and, and do all of that stuff and then i come to church and i can't even clap I, they, they just be doing the most up in here but you just got through twerking right and then we coming against the pastor they are an enemy of the cross an enemy of the cross always trying to look for an opportunity to try to shed some type of negative light on the church on the church or christians always trying to convict or twist up stuff enemy of the cross look for where your heart is and if your heart ain't just because you listen to gospel music don't mean your heart is in god what's in your heart is going to be determined by what are you financing what conversations are you having are you telling young women to be mindful and cover their bodies and love on the lord and wait till they're married are you telling girl shoot if i was fine like you i'd be a thought too she would make them pay for it you know what i'm saying get your money anyhow i gotta get ready to go back to church hallelujah heart is evil father then we cast out demons in your name and then we prophesy in your name You said, get away from me. Do I, I don't even know you. Get away from me. Wait, you, you, what are you talking about? I went to church. I hooped, I hollered, I danced. I kicked my wig off. I did backflips. I did a split one good time. And that's when my knee had went out. I did all that. I was praising and all that. I prophesied. I was sitting there like the Lord said. I did all that. You mean to tell me you ain't trying to let me in? You... God, God is saying, you could have, you may have manipulated them, but you can't manipulate me. Sorry. You may have even lied to yourself, but you can't trick me. I'm looking at the distance of your heart from me. Your heart was never anywhere near me. Your mouth was near me. I heard your mouth. I heard you. You were like, you were like Adam. I'm sitting there. I hear you in the garden, but I'm like, Adam, where are you? I don't see you. Your heart, wherever your treasure, y'all know that, um, I'm going to get back to this lesson, but 33% of people that go to church tithe, everybody else is just a crack on a seat, feeling entitled. Won't, your heart is where your treasure is. Your heart, that's where your treasure at. Five people, I think it's 5%, actually get up and serve. Your heart is where you're trying. Whatever you're willing to put time in, whatever you're willing to put money in, it's just not my season for that yet. But yet and still, you you over here talking about some girl. Did you hear that uh Drake coming to town? I call I called my beautician. I was like, I need an emergency. I need an emergency. Got I gotta get my hair done. That's where your heart is, right there. All right, bench warmers. That's where your heart is. You won't say yes to the call on your life. You won't do anything as any type take on any type of responsibility as it relates to the church because you don't see the church as valuable. Okay, move on. You are you are responsible. Whatever we bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. Not the world. These principalities, these 
people that get high, they coming from your dollar. Yours. Our Christian celebrities, it's hard. They, they end up with this, this thing where it's hard for them to get up. If you go look at uh, worldly celebrities and how many views they have on YouTube and you look at Christian celebrities and you see people you recognize in the Christians and, 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 and the not so Christian people's comment section. And those are the main ones that will attack the church. Y'all, y'all, I just be so tired of y'all religious people. Baby, your heart is not with us. Just go serve the, the one you want to serve. Why are you playing? You coming over into the, the Lord's house and complaining about the Lord's people. But then you get over there with Beyonce and Drake and everybody else. And you got your hands in the air and you dancing and everything. You ain't got no complaints. You ain't got no complaints. You paid six hundred dollars to get into a concert, but you won't even get five dollars in church. Okay, what I'm saying: don't be convicted. Surrender, repent, because what you don't want to do is go before God with that type of heart. You do not want to go before God. You got a chance to get it right. You do not want to go before God with that type of heart. Right, Christians block their own people. It don't be the world. The world would dance to our music. It be Christians. We don't promote. We don't sit up there. We don't do none of that stuff because half of the time we too ashamed. Jesus said, if you're ashamed to own me before man, I'll be ashamed to own you for my father. We shame. That's why we had to come on here. We'd be like, like and share, like and share. Half the people that don't share, they shame. They don't want nobody to know that they, they learn in wisdom, knowledge, and kingdom stuff. No, they will share Drake. And don't be a female asking females. Sh- sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm just not that leader that wants to, to pretend. I really don't play. I don't want to play with roses and stuff like that. I, I just want to tell the truth because it's it's a heart condition. It is a heart condition, right? They will share their witchcraft. Be sitting up there talking about some sage and girl. I just I had to sage my house. Did you t- did you did you tell them about? How you got up and through your house and pray? Your treasure, wherever your treasure is, that is where your heart is. That's who got your heart. That's that's who got your heart. Number ten, last one for this list. Satan is granted access to your soul when you des- when your desires color outside the line of, lines of God's will. Satan is granted access to your mind, will, and emotions, your soul, when your desires color outside the, li- the lines of God's will. God said, there's nothing wrong with desiring nice stuff. There's nothing wrong with desiring things and stuff like that. But it should never be that you're trying to chase it, that you're trying to acquire it, that you're sending to get it, that you're manipulating to get it, that you're trying to connect your way to get it. It, it should always be. If it's your will for me to have it out, I will have it. If it is not your will, I accept your will for my life because your will is superior to my own. And your will, your plans are going to be done either way. And I trust you and I love you. And I don't ever want anything in this life to be uh, exalted above you. And Because, God, there is nothing like you. There is no name above your name. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And, Lord, I decree you, King, I decree it clear. It decree and declare that you are king over my life. I crown you king of kings and lord of lords. And I never want to crown anything else in my life. I repent for all idolatry. I don't want anything above you. I don't want anything above you. God, you are you are beautiful and you're wonderful. You're my everything. And every time I have a desire, every time I feel like there's something that I want, if that thing is pulling on me, that means that there's a void there. That means I have a hunger there. That's a space I need to invite you in. Come in, Lord. I've been desiring this lately. Come into that void. And Lord, give me the desires of my heart. You said that in your word. But Lord, if that desire is ungodly, demonic, if it comes from a hurt place, Lord, take that desire away. Because it it, it won't make me happy anyway. It won't satisfy me anyway. I've learned over the course of life, I've had a lot of stuff. None of it, none of it, none of it fills a void. It it doesn't, genuinely. It just makes me happy for 15 minutes. It makes me happy for a minute. I'm like, yay! I, I appreciate all the things God has blessed me with. I'm not saying I don't appreciate. I am saying this. I've learned 
then nothing satisfies me. There are things that treat me, but there's nothing that cures me like God. All right. God can cure. He can heal that void. Something else can just fill it for a little while. And like right now, feeling a little bit hungry. I ate probably around seven, eight o'clock. Yeah, about seven o'clock. I took I took a nap. I woke up around six something. I ate. All right. I'm hungry again. I got some chicken dressing up in there. I'm going to go up in there. I'm going to wear it out. That, if you want to know what a boy feels like, that's what it feels like when you're hungry. So my stomach is saying I'm empty. It's saying that there's space here for food, okay? That's what my stomach is saying. So now, with, with that space, my stomach then communicates and has to go through all these filters. And these filters say, this is what I got a taste for. So if I've been feeding myself stuff unhealthy, which you can probably see that I have, but those filters, when it interprets it to me, it's not just saying I'm hungry. It's saying I'm hungry for. Thankfully, I got dressing up in there. Right? I got dressing all that. I go up in there. I already know I'm going to act a donkey. I'm saying this to say that whenever there is a void present, your void will tell you what it wants. But what the void needs is God. But Satan is granted access to your soul when you, your desires cut outside the lines of God's will. Lord, I desire to be married. I desire to have this and I desire to have that. But by, but by your will, I, I, I don't want, I would choose to remain single rather than have the wrong man. I don't want anything or anyone that would take me outside of your will. My marriage is for you, for your name to be glorified. It is not for me to entertain my fleshly desires. The things that I want in this life, Lord, that for you to be glorified. Those things cannot be my God. They can't satisfy me. They can't satisfy me. So I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you to do what you do in your due season. I trust you because I don't want, I don't want a man that will lead me out your will. I don't want a man that will lead me into darkness. Because you said if the blind lead the blind, they will both fall into a ditch. That's a low place. No, Lord, I want to be where you are. So any undesired, every desire that is ungodly, that will lead me away from you, that will lead me astray, take it away and fill that void with your presence in Jesus' name. Convict me where I need to be convicted. It, that's the having the heart of God is the, the desire. You got to have a desire bigger than every other desire. My greatest desire. See, you can have other desires, but you're, you got the, there's going to be a big desire. My greatest desire is to please the king. My greatest desire is that God looks at me and say, well done and good and faithful servant. That is my greatest desire. My greatest desire is that God says, I saw your heart in the dark. I saw your heart when you weren't away, when you weren't around people. Not the stuff I do on YouTube or say on YouTube, but when you were in the dark, when the cameras are off, when you were in the house, I saw your heart. I saw you. I heard you. I heard you when you prayed. I heard your heart when you weren't praying. I, I saw you. And I want him to say, good, well done, daughter. Well done. You have done well. I am pleased with you. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. And please hear me, that's not just entering heaven. Because God said, I'll bless you and add no sorrow to it. He said, the joy of the Lord, God will give you stuff. He'll give you stuff. He'll give you, you want nice stuff, God will give you the nice big giant house. And he will smile and watch you when you dancing around there, what have you. And the thing about God and the difference between God and the devil, God said he'll add no sorrow to it. And then when God gives it to you, he'll make you repeatedly happy in it. He'll open your eyes to see different stuff. Baby, look. Look. He'll give you excitement. You walk into a room. Oh, you know what? I want to do a feature wall right there. I want to do this. I want to do that. He will take you on a journey. That's what you do when you get married. When he's in your marriage, God will have you discovering stuff in your spouse years later. 15, 20 years later, he will reignite your love for that person. Because he, he knows what he puts in that person. It's like an Easter egg hunt. He'll sit there and he'll put something in that person and he'll illuminate it. Y'all been married 18 years, 19 years, 33 years. He'll illuminate that. And you'll look at your wife and be like, you got the weirdest laugh. But I think it's cute. I've been noticing this about you lately, that you got this thing about you. Oh, what happened? She'll be noticing stuff about you. Oh, what happened? God will ignite it. That's the beauty of God is that he gives you the stuff 
but the stuff don't have you. And there's peace with it. There's peace with it. And you can watch the world kill themselves and torment themselves and have all these idols and do all that stuff and never get to the very thing that they want. Just being demonized, being real estate for devils. And you can watch the world go out here and do all that crazy stuff to themselves. And you can be in the comfort of your own home, apartment, a box, whatever you are. And you will have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I got another list. It's seven pointers. I'm going to go through it quick because I want to get to this dressing. All right. In this, we were talking about the P. Diddy thing, the P. Diddy saga, Cassie, Joy McNeely, all this other stuff. I think we can ascertain what you see in the industry or what have you. In many cases, whenever you see power and control, you're talking Jezebel. Sorry. I know you hear me say Jezebel, but yeah, it's Jezebel. It's the spirit of Jezebel. Um, a lot of people, creatives are prophets or prophetic people. A lot of creatives, most creatives, if not all creatives, are prophetic. They are prophets or prophetic people. Sister Deanna, thank you. God bless you, beautiful. They're prophets or prophetic people. So most of the people that you see coming up in Hollywood or Hollywood, or have you, most of the people that you see coming up over there, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about on the kingdom side. I'm, I'm talking about some, I don't know if somebody going to say, hey, some demons come on up on the, yeah, of course, but I'm talking about the worldly side. They're, I'm sorry, they're prophets and prophetic people that, that didn't accept the call on their lives. You know, and they, they didn't want to, they didn't want God, right? They found an opportunity to go up and it didn't involve God. They said, hey, or what have you. So next thing you know, remember I said, you have to go through a door. They're going to have to come to a door uh, because the enemy is going to make sure that he protects that industry. The enemy is going to make sure that if you're coming through that industry, you're going to come into a place and they're going to say origin. Sorry. They're going to say drugs. Sorry. They're going to sit back and they're going to say, this is what you're going to have to do. If you want to be a part of this, you're going to have to come here and you're going to have to get yourself into this or what have you. If you, you can be independent, meaning you come up and you're saying, hey, I'm just going to trust God and let God bring my connections. Or if you sit up there and you're like, well, I'm going to go through P. Diddy. Sorry, you're not getting into that industry doing it the right way. You're going to have to go in through that door. And that door has a requirement. There's going to be a sacrifice you got to give at that door. There's going to be a sacrifice. So that industry is uh, littered with altars and sex and drugs and alcohol and witchcraft. It is littered with all things ungodly. It is littered with that kind of stuff. So I'm just saying this to say, be careful what you're consuming. You know, be careful what you're taking in because whatever is in that, like, for example, whatever's in P. Diddy is in his music. Whatever's in Drake is in his music. Whatever's in Beyonce is in her music. Sorry. Not saying you're going to pick up the demon from listening to it, but if you keep listening to it, it's going to keep bringing you under the influence because that's what music does. That's what media does. Your favorite, uh, actors that's what they do it is designed to bring you under the influence this is why i listen to gospel right I'm, I'm careful about what goes in my ear my car is filled with gospel there is no secular stuff that plays when i get married yeah we may have secular you know the the, the, the slow jams and stuff like that but my i, I surround god said i was surrounded with songs with deliverance that's what i do i like things that encourage me things that tell me that i like to hear the artists encouraging me i have theme songs with seasons and stuff like that um, what have you? I like to hear the spirit of God, like what people are saying, like worship him. Let's worship him in spirit and truth. Encouraging music. Encouraging me. Yeah, Cardi B and Summer Walker haven't followed them, but I, I I don't know too much about Summer Walker. I don't know too much about her. I've heard of her. I've heard her name, though. I've chosen to surround myself with the music that God wants to surround me with. I'm in agreement with him. I'm like, and when when I got my car. I'm like, God, I'm not going to glorify. I'm not going to do what people do when they get something new that they feel like I got to put something demonic on and I got to play something demonic or what have you. Then I got to do a video for, for TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, where I got some music on playing in the background, acting like, like that's the music that encouraged me. That's a lie for the pit of hell. That ain't what encouraged me. When I was building my business, it was, come on, y'all. When I was building, when I'm sitting up there at, at the office and doing work and doing all of that stuff, there was no secular music uh, playing up in there. It was Jason Nelson. It was William McDowell. It was Ty Tribbett. It was uh, Tasha Combs. Uh, who else? It was, I don't know who seemed worthy, but if I tell Alexa to play it, that's what was encouraging me. 
And when I do a video, I'm not looking and turn around to do a video, you know, just to introduce my stuff. And then I got something else playing on in the background. I got something. No, I'm listening to kingdom music. I'm listening to music that says, hey, that encourages. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to tell you. Something is going to influence you. And whatever influences you, it's going to make a determination of what your next season looks like. Something is going to encourage you. It's going to influence you. And if you think influence, think drugs, think alcohol. If you're th what you do under the influence, right? When you're under the influence of God's spirit, you're listening to music that encourages you. You know what it does? It makes you encourage to do more for the king. When you listen to something demonic, it makes you want to do demonic things. You think I was going to be up in my shop trying to twerk? <laughs> Sorry. You think I was going to be up in there playing some stuff up in there? No. I'm, play, I'm playing stuff that make me sit up there and raise my hands and praise God and, and celebrate God. I'm talking about joy, praise, and worship, okay? Let's get into this. I'm going to give you uh, seven facts about Jezebel. Then we're going to get out of here. Seven facts about Jezebel. Number one, it is a principality. It is a hybrid born from the spirits of witchcraft and control. When witchcraft and control have a baby, welcome Jezebel. When witchcraft and control come together, you now have a Jezebel spirit. Like I said, everything centers itself around control. And please don't think that witchcraft is everything dealing with altars. Witchcraft has everything to do with control. All of it, the root of it is control. Witchcraft has everything to do with control. <laughs> no, you got to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about that. But witchcraft has everything to do about, with control. You're going to go out there and try to do a love spell instead of allowing somebody to genuinely to say, yeah, I want to get to know you better. No, you say, mm -mm. he didn't look at me. What is this? I actually taught at my uh, pastor's school and when, in the bag they gave us some stuff and the candle was in there. Perfect. Because y'all know people like to associate. You didn't want me. Let's just say this is a cigarette lighter. <laughs> you want me. I'm going to make you want me. You don't wait. You don't want me, okay? You are gonna want me? And I've never, I, I, y'all. I, I try not to get too far, cause I, I, I laugh and talk and what have you. But I, I've said this. I, I've, I've said this before. I never, never understood it. I never understood the concept of trying to make somebody want you that don't want you. I never understood that. My brain cells don't wrap around that. Even when I was in the world, I've never been into that kind of stuff. I've never been into girl. He, he don't like you. And I think it's because one. I think, and I think it has everything to do with perspective. And I'm, I'm not saying this to boast or to brag. I'm saying this to heal. It has. I, I want to change your perspective. It has everything to do with perspective. Even when I was in the world, I understood that at the end of the day, there is somebody for everybody. There is somebody for everybody. Even when I was in the world, I understood that there's somebody out there and if you walk by a dude and he don't double take you that ain't for you that ain't for you if you crazy enough to sit back and say he gonna want me Oh, it goes further. It goes further and uh, pick me. You got people out here doing witchcraft. You got people out like right now. I never thought I would have saw the day, even though it was in my day. But I thought, I, I guess I, I, I automatically think people are healed enough to say, to or sober enough to say, I wouldn't want somebody who doesn't want me. I, I would think that, but you got women out here that will walk into a bar or walk into a space, see a dude, dude don't blink an eye, don't bat an eye. Or maybe they date a guy, because I think a lot of love spells come from that. They date a guy, and they're like, you think you're going to leave me? You think you're going you to leave me? I got your lead. I got your lead. 
I've never understood anybody that would want somebody to be sitting in front of you, demon possessed under a trance, just there. All right. But it is a principality. It is a hybrid born of witchcraft and control. It is a hybrid born of witchcraft and control that centers itself around control. If you desire to control another person, you need deliverance. Control, the desire to control people comes from you lacking this, the fruit of self-control. Because you lost control of yourself, now you're trying to rob everybody else of their control. The desire to control another human being has everything to do with you not having self-control. To make people, to bully people, to make people do what you want them to do has everything to do with you not having self-control. You wanting something and cannot have it. No, they are here. They are here. They got love spells now. I um share the testimony about when I the, the first time I got my lashes done. I, I set my appointment, went to the shop, got there, uh, you know, about 15 minutes early as you should. And I was waiting. They had two people in the room um, getting their lashes done. So it was two lash techs up in there. And I remember there was these beads that I had to go through. That was the first thing that alarmed me. Like, hey, you know, I associate them beads with, with witches. Um, then I got in there and it was another lady sitting in the chair. She was waiting to get her lashes done as well. And we're just sitting there in this little waiting room and they're we're right there in front of the other room watching the, the they got these other two women that laid out on these tables and they were doing their lashes and i remember the lady uh one of the lady i overheard she was talking they were talking loud so it's not even overheard they were just talking they were free in their speech and she was like yeah somebody contacted me yesterday wanting a love spell and when i heard her say that i'm like I'm sensitive. I'm highly prophetic. All right. So I'm like, oh, I don't think she's supposed to touch me. Like, but I knew because I had saw the girl's uh, face online who was going to be doing my lashes. So the one who was talking about love spells, she was an owner. But I knew she wasn't going to be touching me. I knew it was going to be the other girl. But the other girl was talking to her and they were in agreement. And the other girl was and I was just sitting up there and I'm just sitting in there thinking what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do. Literally, I'm in there thinking, what, what should I do? Should I get up? Left? Should I leave? Am I supposed to do this? Or what have you? And I'm like, I'm calming myself down. I'm telling myself, she's not going to be the one doing your lashes. It's going to be the other girl. She's not going to be. This is the first time I got my lashes done. She's not going to be the, the one. When my turn, my time came, because yeah, they, women out here paying for love spells right now. Sister Mary, thank you. God bless you, beautiful. God bless you. When the time, the time came for me to go get my lashes done, I went laid on that table. <laughs> I immediately start having visions. Immediately. Immediately. It's the second time where I, the first time I had that happen to me, I had a lady, I, I don't remember if it was Georgia or what I, I just feel like it was, I had first got somewhere. So it had to be when I first got to Georgia. But I had, a, it was an African woman. I had went to her shop first time, last time, only time. Went to her shop to get my hair done. Lady doing my hair, I started dozing off. I started going into visions, like having dreams, like strong. And I, I was seeing weird stuff, and I kept seeing a bloody wall. I saw a man covered in blood. I saw, like, fingerprints on the wall, you know, like blood. And I'm, I'm snapping out of it. Like, this is a horrible dream. Then I started feeling my tightening. My body started tightening up. You know how that Charlie horse all over your body? And I started, I was like, Python? Mind you, in the name of Jesus. I realized that's the spirit of witchcraft. That's the spirit of Python. And I'm like, this woman that did some stuff. She didn't came out of some stuff. Like, she didn't did some stuff. Whatever she did. I had to keep getting up the stretch. That's when I realized you get some of you gotta you got you you gotta be careful who touch you. You're too prophetic for that. I'm too prophetic for that. that. So it freaked me out there. But then when I went to that last shop and I got my lashes done, when I laid on that table, I went straight into visions. But this time I didn't have any crazy visions. I literally saw some of the most vivid pictures I'd ever seen. I saw a man with a uh, like a, a camera. I think I don't know if I remember if I had that. Or what have you, I was just maybe thinking about a man with a camera because I remember seeing like pictures of field of beautiful, like beautiful colors and stuff like that. But it, I was just constantly going, you know, I'm getting, I'm she doing my lashes, I'm getting snatched up in visions. I had it in my head, I ain't coming back here. I ain't coming back here. I left there and I immediately I text my apostle, I text my pastor, and I was like, 
I told him what happened. I was like, I got caught up in there. And then, you know, I had actually overpaid them. And the lady was like, well, you, you could just use your payment for your second payment when you come back. And I was like, I didn't want to tell her when coming back. So I was like, okay. But then I was wondering, should I run? Or, so I, I ended up texting my pops. I was like, listen, I don't know what to do. Should I, should I run? Uh, should I not go back? And um, he responded. He gave me some, he gave me wisdom. He was like, if you're up for the challenge, you can go back. If you're not scared of that kind of stuff, you understand that greater is he who is in you. In other words, that's a challenge, you know, winning the soul for Christ, you can go back. But if that's something that freaks you out and you don't feel comfortable, don't go back. Don't go back. But I was like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to take the appointment. It ended up me never taking an appointment. I don't remember what happened, but uh, I came away from lashes for quite some time. And then eventually I found another lash tag. I, up, I found another lash tag. And so the lash tag that I have now, she's she's Christian. She's Christian or what have you. I told her about that story plenty of times. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I, I was getting snatched up in visions. Like snatched up in visions. I was like, what in the world? All right, so let's be talking about facts about Jezebel. Number two, Jezebel hates and sets out to destroy God's prophets. You a prophet or prophetic person? Welcome to the party of being hated. Jezebel hates God's prophets. Sorry. If you're prophetic, Jezebel hates you. Jezebel hates you so much that Jezebel will marry you. Jezebel hates you so much that Jezebel will have children with you. Jezebel hates you so much that Jezebel will go every, go all, all to the ends of the earth to destroy your name, your reputation, to destroy everything about you. Jezebel is tormented because prophets and prophetic people are her undoing. So Jezebel will go, Jezebel will do anything to have. Jezebel wants to give her children to the brother your last name. Oh, she wants you to have kids with her. She wants to give me your last name because a good name is to be desired because she knows she's going she gonna to torment him. And when I say she, I'm talking about it be a man or a woman, but I'm just using Jezebel's name. She's going to torment him. She's going to break him. She's going to open him up for, the, for unclean spirits. Your, your good name is going to be tormented. It's going to be torn down. Not, not only that, Jezebel is going to leave you and tell everybody that you are Jezebel. Jezebel is going to destroy it. Jezebel hates you so much that she wants to, she wants your name. She wants your name. She wants your name. Because they can destroy your name. Jezebel hates God's prophets and prophetic people. You think she went and got uh, Ahab and completely gutted this man out from the inside out. He had a better case if he had had worms in his balls. And his, if his nutsack had been on fire. I'm talking about a fire. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you. Some of y'all from going to hell. The fire is everlasting. Your balls on so yeah, you saw. <laughs> you think you're like you kicked in the balls. Just if that if that's enough, because I don't think y'all think about that kind of stuff. Okay. I don't think y'all think about that kind of stuff. Just everlasting toy ever. All right, everlasting. All right. Jezebel hates and says how this destroy God's prophets and prophetic people. All right. Jezebel hates you. The narcissist, that spirit, it hates you. It's going to come after you. Realistically speaking, if you're a prophet of God, if you're a prophetic, you have to, if you're a prophet or you're a prophetic person, you have to be extra guarded when it comes to your ring finger. You have to be extra guarded when it comes to your heart. You got to be extra guarded because Jezebel will put on a church hat. Jezebel will put on uh, church shoes. Jezebel will put on anything. Jezebel will go out, go out of his way or her, her way to get you. Jezebel will go out of that way. What well, the Bible tells you, seek ye first the kingdom of God. The Bible tells you to test the spirit. Jezebel will go out of their way to ensnare you. To ensnare you. Jezebel will sit in the house and eat away your peace, eat away at your mind, it will eat you up until you done lost it. Eat, Jezebel, if you a dude, Jezebel will eat you up and convince you that you gay. Jezebel will have will eat your whole nutsack up. He'll have you sit up in the house, like uh, bend over because you, you just been looking ashy. Why well, I gotta bend over for you? To, no, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some Vaseline up to crack your tail. Okay, I don't see what the problem is. He'll eat your tail up. He'll eat you alive. All right, but they hate and they set, they set out to destroy God's prophets and prophetic people. So be careful. Be careful because they're out there in numbers. They're out there in droves. And hear me. 
Say knows with Satan knows Satan has a catalog of people. Say knows what Jezebel to throw at you. So Saint Christ, I'm sorry. The enemy knows. And now he, he he'll go into his catalog and he'll get old busted, old busted peewee, right? He'll throw peewee at you. He'll throw peewee at you and be, peewee come over there. Hey, and the enemy knows you're probably not gonna give peewee a chance. But the enemy knows exactly what to throw at you. He knows exactly what he throw. He'll 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 throw. I was thinking about one of my mother's snares the other day. It was a Leviathan. My mom ended up in a, in a relationship with this dude who had a strong Leviathan spirit. I'm gonna do a lesson on this. I'm thinking that I I'm, I've been thinking about this lately. I think a lot of what we describe as masculinity is Leviathan. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. You know, as a female, you know, us having an attraction to. Um, masculinity and males and I think masculinity is cool but I think that what we're talking about sometimes we're talking about an extreme and uh you know we're, we're talking about an extreme or what have you or what the world and I think that's a leviathan just from based on my assessment just what I'm just but I'm, I'm still praying on that but I, I'm starting to think that a lot of us are attracted to leviathan or what have you so that's something we want to definitely pray about we want to be careful oh as we relate but I remember my mom had this man who was overly masculine um to the point he was uberly masculine in behavior, not in thought. In behavior, like he he said, woman, he would look down at my mom. He was like, oh. you know, he would act all like he was a man and man of that. Dude wouldn't even get a job. He worked at a church of security. Okay. Um, that was the only thing that he would do. He got paid for what he did. He got like, I think it was like a hundred a week, a hundred every two weeks. Would not go out there and get it. It was not helping. My mom was working two jobs to take care of him. Only thing he guarded was his kitchen table and the refrigerator. Sister Armani, thank you. God bless you, beautiful. That's the only thing he guarded. And she had, she just wanted to have, and she felt like she was so super submissive. She's like, okay, baby. And I used to come to my mom. How are you comfortable with this man just sitting on your couch? Like there was one section on the couch that was just bent all the way in. It had dirt on the arm of the couch. Dirt on the arm of the couch and what have you. And she, it, it, really she just had a bath in the house. All right, let's move on from there. Number three, what you call the narcissist is just another individual with a Jezebel spirit. And a reprobate mind. What you call the narcissist, you guys already know that, so we're not going to stay there. What you call the narcissist is just another person with a Jezebel spirit. And a, in many cases, a reprobate mind. Remember I told you there is a spectrum of narcissism. Then when you get to the middle of it, that's when you start seeing um, a person that's going to be more narcissistic. Then once they tilt over to the left, now you can get into the realm of disorder. And this is where you say the person is a narcissist. Or they're incredibly narcissistic. It's a difference between being narcissistic and being a narcissist. When a person gets to the point where you can flat out say that they are narcissists, it means that they've been turned over to a reprobate mind. It means that they've been turned over to a reprobate mind. Why would you want to get married to somebody or have people in your corner that have been turned over to a reprobate mind? All right. But these are facts about Jezebel. Um, and like I said, Cassie, P. Diddy, all of that. Sorry, a lot of times we could talk about that kind of stuff, but that stuff, this is why you can't reach those type of people. Their mind is already gone. It's already gone. That it's already gone. And it's not to say they're not recoverable. It is to say at this stage, right? You can only pray. Number four, Jezebel gains access to people through idolatry, witchcraft, and control. Jezebel gains access to people through idolatry, witchcraft, and control. It always with the prophet or the prophetic person because of how you're wired, because of your sensitivity, it has everything to do with your desire. It has everything to do with your desire to have something. Prophets are prone, and pro prophets and prophetic people are prone to idolatry. Prophets and prophetic people are prone to idolatry. You're wired a certain way. You can idolize a season. You can end up idolizing being a victim. You can idolize a, a lot of different things. If you find pleasure in it, if you can get your mind, you can trick your mind into producing dopamine in that situation, or producing producing serotonin, or sort serotonin, or even adrenaline. If you can uh, trick your mind or what have you, if you can uh, manipulate your mind and you can get it to give you your drug of choice in whatever situation, you can end up idolizing that season. You can end up idolizing that season. Right. 
but Jezebel gains access to people through idolatry, witchcraft, and control. If you're dating somebody and you notice that they're trying to get you in an idolatry or they're trying to get you to fall in love, they're trying to get you, like they're trying to lock you, you're just saying, hey, just get to know me. Like, let's just be cool. Like, why we, why we can't just be friends right now? Why we can't just be cool and get to know each other, you know, laugh and all this other stuff, the stuff that makes relationships strong. Why we can't do that? Why are you so busy trying to get it to the space where we got to be in love? Why are you trying to get me, like, why you want butterflies in my stomach right now? I don't understand that. Why you want butterflies in my stomach? That has everything to do with control. That has everything to do with control because people who have the Jezebel spirit, a lot of times they don't feel safe with you. They don't feel safe enough for them to let their fangs hang. Um, Unless they got that yoke on your neck, unless they got you in that space where you think you can't live without them. They don't feel, uh, or unless they sat up there and they told you, I want you to have my baby, you over there pregnant by them. Uh, they don't feel, they don't feel like they can let their, uh, they don't feel like they can let their fangs hang out. They don't feel like they can let their snakes hang uh, from their head. They don't feel like they could uh, just kind of really sit down and relax and, you know, let their hooves out. They don't feel like they can just kind of relax around you until they got you into some type of captivity. But they, they, Jezebel has to get you an idolatry. Whether that is, let's say, you say, um, Tiffany, I'm a real skilled let's say I'm skilled in makeup. Like, I can slay Tiffany. Like, I don't feel like nobody in the industry touches me, Tiffany. I feel like I'm supposed to be doing makeup on celebrities. And all that, that's fine. But chase God first, put him first. If you allow your career and your gift to become an idol, then you're going to attract Jezebel. If you allow your career and your gift to become an idol, you're going to attract Jezebel without a shadow of doubt because you're gifted, you're all that. So Jezebel going to sit there. Like I told you, this is where Jezebel works. Jezebel going to watch you say, let me watch you worship yourself. Bravo. Come here, come close. And then they're going to sit there and be like, bravo, bravo, bravo. Every time Jezebel's going to worship you. But then after a while, after Jezebel is snares, you after they have the yoke, if they have to, they have a soul tie and they've tested the soul tie to make sure they're strong. Jezebel then says, now give me that worship. The way you were worshiping yourself, give it to me. And the way they say it, they say, you selfish. You selfish. And they ain't lying. Because they sat there and they worshiped you. They let you be all self-centered and all this other stuff. Talking about stuff. And I, I, you know, when I do makeup, I like to take my time when I'm doing cut creases and stuff like that. Like, I don't be playing. Like everybody else, they be trying to move real fast and stuff like that. I be Picasso on them eyes. I just be trying to take my time. And I'm trying to make sure that that thing goes smooth. Because I know they, they say he's supposed to be they sisters, but they're not twins. But I'm like, uh-uh. I need them things to be twins. Okay? 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 They will sit there and watch you with Leviathan. They will watch you with pride. They will watch you with those unclean spirits. And they like, you the best. You the best. Ain't nobody out there like you. Okay? None. Nobody out there. I, I didn't I didn't and met all these makeup artists all and nobody the nobody cut crease like you. Don't nobody contour like you. Last 18 people that I, I I've known that, that that do makeup and you know trying to they, they, when I, I did a test run, I told them to do my face. They had, me, they had me looking like a whole dude. I'm like, what the heck is this? Well, you do, you have, you made me look soft. Or what have you made? And they like, yeah, because I don't be believing in all that extra contour because you're you a female. You don't need all that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I appreciate. But you did something nice. You know, you, you know, all of that. The Jezebel will let you praise yourself and they will praise you with you. And then once you're done, that hand going to stop and they're going to do this. Now give me that praise. Now, give me that praise. That's how they gain access. They got to get they got to get a soul tie with you. They got to get soul tie. Number five, the Jezebel spirit is marked by an inability to take accountability for one's own actions. The Jezebel spirit is marked by an inability. One of the ways you can tell a person has a Jezebel spirit is they cannot take accountability. You will never hear them take full accountability. It is a rare thing. If you ever see them do that, you need to uh, film it and send it to National Geographic because it just doesn't happen. All right, she puffs you up just to suck that air out of you. 
The Jezebel spirit is marked by an inability to take accountability for one's own actions. Anytime I have, let's say, even if I've mentored people, right? And we get to a space where something is wrong. And I, I, I correct them. I say, hey, you are off. You should have done that. And they can't take responsibility. And I know that's the pattern. I know what I'm dealing with. I know what I'm dealing with. Because right then and there, that person is showing me they have a hard heart. That hard heart is Leviathan. So if Leviathan is there, Leviathan is a garden spirit. He's guarding somebody. Many times, it's going to be Jezebel. Many times, it's going to be Jezebel. They have trouble taking responsibility. If you call them out on something, they'll be like, no, I did not. Oh, that, if they do say it was me, it was because, well, I'm sorry you made me do what I did. You know, I did that as a response to something you did. Um, but I guess we're not going to talk about that. They cannot and will not take responsibility. They cannot. It's going to always be somebody else's fault but them. They cannot. And the Bible talks about that in the book of Revelations. God said, I gave her space to repent, but she would not. Jezebel has been the truth of the, the same for thousands of years. They have. It is hard for them to take responsibility. It is hard. It is hard. Number six, when Hollywood or when Hollywood gets you to idolize one of its many princes or princesses, it opens you up for Jezebel by intoxicating you with lies. When Hollywood gets you to idolize one of its many princes or princesses, it opens you up for Jezebel by intoxicating you. Jezebel always seeks to get you under the influence. Jezebel always seeks to get you under the influence. So if you're sitting there and you're listening to a song, pay attention to how that song makes you feel. It gets you under the influence. I, I can watch a video and I can feel love. right? I can watch a video and I'm an animal lover, y'all. Um, but I can watch a, a video uh, and I see animals. It's about a risk and an animal. Oh, that's going to warm my feathers. Um, if I could watch a video of uh, uh, somebody like a soldier coming back and surprising their family. And I see the family and I see all the love and I'm just like, ah, it's so beautiful. It, it, it warms me up, right? It's influencing me. It's warming me up. It's, it, that means it has a measure of access. If I'm watching anything demonic and that inspires me, I need deliverance. If I'm watching anything demonic and it inspires me, that is a sign that I'm in need of deliverance. That is a sign that there's something wrong. If, if I'm scrolling through TikTok or anything else, I come across a video that's demonic. I'm just like this. Scroll. Scroll. If I come across a, somebody come up there and they like third eye, I'm like, scroll. If I come across somebody talking about mother ever, I'm going to tell you about this. Be this mother ever. Scroll. It doesn't do anything to me because that's not my king. That's, that's not the language of my kingdom, right? It's not the language of the kingdom. I'm, but Hollywood, when Hollywood gets you to idolize one of his many princes or princesses, it opens you up for Jezebel by intoxicating you with lies. I think I know what God wants me to tell y'all real quick. Real. Some of y'all, you send your kids up for that. I don't, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know. I just don't understand. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You can do how you do in your house because that's between you and your house and that's between you and God. But I've never understood that my kids could not play music in my house that I didn't listen to. I would not allow my kids to be up in my house playing some music and it's time my mother up for this. And I'm talking about turn that down. No Negro turn that off. Now we can call my cat a kid a Negro, but I say, child of God, turn it off. Turn it off. Remember some years ago when I lived in Mississippi, I've been like this for years, y'all, by the way. I got one more that we're going to get out of here. An old friend of mine, she bring her kids over and the kids start playing. No, bottom to Florida. I remember that. He come over, he get on my computer, he starts playing, you know, some stuff. And I was like, cut that off. And I'm, I'm feeling weird because I don't want to make her uncomfortable and make him. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't have that in my atmosphere. And I'm not going to host you. And I, I got to just give in and let you set an atmosphere in my house that I don't function in. Or no. We all have an atmosphere that we grow in. Demons need certain atmospheres. OK. And so what I'm not going to do 
is end up creating an atmosphere to make sure your demons are comfortable. It, not if you come to my house, I will never make your demons comfortable. I will never. I will not sit up there and be like, well, I guess we got to burn sage and cut. No, -uh. your demons will be highly uncomfortable. That praise and worship will play. That, 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 that praise and worship will pray. It will play because what we ain't going to do is I'm sitting up there and I'm playing music that I don't listen to and I'm all uncomfortable in my own stuff while your demons thrive and you all over there lit up and I'm being drained. I'm over here just like looking like you gonna go home. Well, it is getting kind of late. <laughs> do you want to go to your house? Oh, no, I'm just feeling real comfortable over here. No, I would never set that atmosphere. All right, let's move on to number seven. Jezebel feels entitled to any soul that has, has submitted to it. Jezebel feels entitled to any soul that has that has submitted itself to it. And what does that mean? If you're a prophet, you're a prophet. If you're going back to Cassie, she submitted to um, Diddy. She submitted to him. How did she submit to him? She kept going back. She kept going around him. She signed contracts. She got into a legality with him. She entangled her soul with this dude. She entangled her soul with this dude. At any time, one thing I've noticed, for example, an abuser and stuff like that, once a person has touched you, they feel entitled to you. One of the, the third lawsuit, this lady, she claims that, you know, um, Diddy and Aaron Hall both sexually assaulted her. She said that Diddy pretty much coerced her, um, but what have you. But then she said Aaron Hall came in there and, you know, pretty much assaulted her. Um, I won't try to give a diagnostic of that, but I will say, what was I, where was I about to go with this? He showed up at the space and she said he choked her until she passed out. He didn't know her. She was new. One thing you'll come to understand about people is that I could talk to a guy. I could date a guy. And in me dating him, if I never let him touch me, he'll never feel the right to touch me. If I never let him touch me, he'll never feel the right to touch me. In most cases, unless he just cray, 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 like, like he's a psychopath, crazy. But most cases, he won't feel the need to touch me. So I can stand in front of an abusive guy. I can stand in front of an abusive guy and I can talk noise and I can be dating him and I can say, listen, first and foremost, I don't know who you think you are. Because one thing I'm not about to do, you're not going to talk to me like that. He may get angry. He may show rage and stuff like that. But because I've never let him touch me, he won't hit me. I'm trying to show you where the hits come from. When a woman sat back and said I was in an abusive relationship, you could bet, bet you by golly, wow, there was some bodily fluid slinging, okay? Because when this is how demons work. Demons feel like I can't touch you until you let me touch you. I don't have a right to you. De whenever you cast the demons out, sometimes they'll say, I got a right to this person. <laughs> I, have, I have a right to this person. I'm saying this to say, if you go out here, outside the will of God, and you're, letting them, you're allowing a man or a female to put their hands on you, to have sex with you, to touch you in an illicit way, that spirit in them then stakes claim over your soul. That spirit in them then stakes claim over your soul, and they feel like they have a legal right. They got a right to touch you, however they want to touch you, whenever they want to touch you. They got a right to you. I don't care if you done slept with them one time, they're going to feel a right to you. When I, I told this story, um, when I told the story about the ex that kidnapped, you know, tried to kidnap me, we had been sexually active. That's why he felt the right. That's why he felt like he could pick me up and throw me. That's why he felt like he had a right to do certain things because we had been sexually active. We had been sexually active. He felt like because I let him touch my body, he felt like my body belonged to him. I'm sorry. Because I let him touch me. He felt like my body belonged to him because you're dealing with a demonic person. And whenever you sleep with somebody, you essentially marry them and the two become one. So you give your body over to that thing. You give your body over to that thing. Like I said, it's not, I already know somebody being in the comment section said, I, would, I didn't even sleep with this man, but he felt it right to me. If he gave you something, he bought something for you and you ate it. I'm sorry. 
y'all y'all don't want to hear it. If you ate some, if you bought, if he bought something, clothing or anything you put on your body or in your body, it will give them what they feel like is a legal right. If you if he take you out and you eat that food, or he buy clothes for you, he's going to feel like he has a legal right to your body. He's going to feel like he got a legal the um story i just was got gotten reminded of as soon as i said unless they didn't touch you was a dude that um that tried to humiliate me in the club or he actually did humiliate me that was trying to fight me in the club i never i never kissed him never had sex with him never but he snatched me across the table in the club pulled my hair in the club i let him spend money on me i let him spend money on me I let him spend money on me. He came out. He spent money on me. He came out one day. I was at lunch with my uh, friend girl. He, uh, I told him we was getting ready to go to lunch. He showed up at the restaurant, came, sat, and said, hey, how y'all doing? He was like, just wanted to swing through real quick and, you know, pay for your lunch and all that. But I'm going to get up out of here. Right. Demons using 1 Corinthians 7, 4. This is exactly what I was thinking about. The minute you give your body up, what about this is why God tell you, Romans 12, 1, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So you keep the devil's hands off of it. Yes, they can. They will try to, well, I mean, God want to get a dream to you. God can get a dream to you. But if you're separated from God, then, or if you're outside of God's will, The enemy is always looking for an open door. And if you sit back there and that open door happens to be your legs, you sit up there to run the moment you sit there, you put your lips on a man or to the brothers, you put your lips on a woman. Y'all touch on each other. When money get involved, you are, you are entering into a legality with that person. That person we oftentimes feel, a right, feel like they have a right to you. This is why you test the spirit. I'll say this, and I, I'm going to get out of here. This is why I tell you, whenever you are um, dating a guy or something, I remember the older people used to teach us, you know, don't let men spend money on you when you barely know them. Because they understood what we, we seem to for, have forgotten upon, you know, on this generation. Don't let men, like, you don't know them, don't let them spend money on you. You know, when you go out to eat or what have you, sure, you know, going out to the, going out to lunch with a guy, you expect him to take pick the tab. That is just cultural. You expect him to pick the tab, but it is always best practice if you're going to go out to lunch with a guy. Uh, that is always best practice that you go on a date after you are comfortable enough letting him spend money. You go on a date when you're comfortable enough, when you feel like you're sane enough to spend money on me, like your mind. You ain't crazy. That means that. If a man walks up to me and says, in most cases, uh, I have broken every rule once, you know, a few times, but if a guy breaks, 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 bleh, walks up to me and says, I'm going to take you out. Let's change numbers first. Let me talk to you on the phone. Because the minute he takes me, he could take me out to a nice restaurant, spend $60 on me, he feel like he didn't spend a lot, right? I, I could do that for myself, but he may feel like, some type of way, like I spent sixty dollars on her, plus I paid a tip to the waiter. <laughs> I was, I got my own meal, and I spent forty five on meal, mine. So that's one hundred and five dollars, and I tipped the waiter fifty bucks. So we're looking at one hundred and fifty five dollars just for me. Now he won't count that as um, sixty for mine. He'll count the whole one hundred and fifty five. At I spent one hundred and fifty five just to take you out. He gonna count what he spent on himself and all of that stuff. Right then and there, he'll start sharing, showing ter territorialism. Right then and there, he'll start showing territorialism because right then and there, he's spent money on me, right? And so this is why you want to make sure somebody is um, safe and sane and you prayed about them and you talked to them for a while before you agree to a date because you can mess around and agree to a date with somebody who's obsessive and you go out on one date and it ends up being horrible for you but now they're at home fantasizing about you. Now they're at home thinking, this is the one for me.
this is the one for me. We're going to be together. We're going to have tons and tons of babies. And we're going to do all of that. And they, they got that in their head. And you're thinking, how, did I, how do I tell that booger back to stop calling me? Because he crazy. And I ain't going to go through that. You at home, y'all got two different directions of thought, right? You at home like, how do I get out of this? I should have gave that dude a Google voice on the crap. How do I get out of this? He lived, oh, dang. He lived close. I'm going to get out of this. He at, the, he at the house thinking about, let me go online, look at some wedding rings. <laughs> She's such a feisty one. I, I, I can only imagine if I gave her a tiny ring, she just... No, I gotta give her something big. Let me find something. Mm -mm, that's too cheap. It looks nice, but she giving her a three thousand dollar ring would probably. I'm gonna give her this. Now I'm not telling y'all this ring I'm wearing. I'm just I'm just being funny right here. I'm just being extra dramatic. I'm gonna give her this. It's full of diamonds. So so six thousand two hundred and fifty bucks. Yep. Let me go ahead and set up a station. Uh, 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 let me go ahead and set up a, an account. Go ahead and start putting money aside so I can try to get that ring within the next few months. I know I just met her Tuesday. <laughs> I know I just met her Tuesday. Put that money aside. Yeah, and you at home like, I should have talked to him on the phone. I should have saw. If I had to talk to him on the phone, I would have seen he was crazy. If I had to talk to him on the phone. But no, I had to let my hunger get me. I had to be dumb. I'd have spent that man, I'd have let that man spend some of his SSI check because I know he get a crazy check. He had spent some of his SSI check taking me out. And that, oh God. <laughs> now I feel like my life in danger. All oh, because I wanted some doggone sushi. Stupid. <clears throat> you know, emotionally, mentally, and morally abusing yourself because you realize that so this is why I say um, go on a date first. Now, my heart goes out to those who were involved in the whole D D P Diddy thing. And my prayer for him is that he heal and get delivered or uh, what have you. Because it's not the desire of God that any of us die and go to hell. You know, one thing I've learned is not to make an enemy of a person in my head just because of evil things that they've done. I'm an enemy of their evil. But uh, for that soul, you know, I try to make sure I have the same desire for the soul that God has is that we all come to repentance and that we all surrender ourselves to God. And maybe this is what it would take for him. I don't know. Uh, but that we will all come to repentance or what have you. <laughs> right? But um, we will all come to repentance and that we will surrender ourselves to God. That is the desire of God. So that's my prayer is that he would turn himself around. My prayer is that Cassie and Joy McNeil and the other lady will get their healing and their deliverance. And they think we'll all come to see the beauty and the glory of God. Y'all, I, I can't even I can't even put it in words. I mean, like stuff like just I ain't gonna even talk because I was gonna say, I was gonna say the thing is me and God, like I, what I talked to him about, but I can't even put in words how beautiful he is as a God. I mean, he's the only true and living God, but I can't even put it in words how satisfying he is. And you may not even know that right now. How all of this stuff, everything on this earth, there's nothing on this earth that can satisfy you like he can. Literally, literally you can have $289 billion in your account. No, let's take that back. Let's take you higher. You can have $899 billion in your account. And you can know that you got 899 more billion coming. You can have deals on the table. You can have the most handsome man you've ever seen, right? And he and he's with you for real. He ain't there because of the $899. Uh, he ain't, I'm just saying, no, he ain't there for the $899. Oh, what have you? know, I'm just saying, if he's the most beautiful man in the world, he probably is there for the $899. But maybe he ain't. Let's just say he's there because he loves you. He want to be with you. And then you got all, you can have that big house. You can have the properties. You can have all of that. You can have some of the most beautiful children anybody's ever seen. Children can be healthy, whole, and everything. You can have all of the things of this earth. You can have cars in your driveway for days, right? You can have, forget a driveway. You can have a whole parking lot of cars, right? You can have all of that stuff. You can have castles that you build in other countries. You can have uh, guys. You can you can you can have a wife that says, "My my my husband, 
Go have as many wives, wives as you want, okay? Please. It, there are so many booties out there. Why would I limit you to mine? <laughs> no. And I, I'm giving an accent because some guys want them exotic. Go, no, sweetie. You go. You go out here. And I want you to sample. I bring booty home for you, okay? I bring booty home for you. You can do what you want to do. Just smack it up, flip it, and rub it all the way down, okay? The only thing I ask, okay, is that you don't do it in our bed, okay? You can have all of the stuff that you think you need and be miserable, demonized, tired of life. You can have it in your head that hell looks better than your life. There is nothing on the face of this planet. Nothing. And when I say nothing, some of y'all can't believe me because... You like all of you have, all you've ever had was nothing. But there's nothing on the face of this planet. No amount of money, no reality that will satisfy you like the most high God. None of it. None of it can fill a void. None of it. You go and look at, you know, um, who was that billionaire that died from cancer? You know, and my, my first thought is, dang, you got you you should have money to. Pay the folks to oh. okay. I see Zion Ning, Zion Ning. I don't know about her, but I'm saying we all got to go before the King of Kings. We all got to give up the ghosts. We all got to come out of these bodies at some point. We all got to come out of these bodies at some point. And me being a businesswoman, let me tell you this. In business, you learn good investments versus bad investments, right? And you can make a bad investment. It's not going to be a loss if you consider it an expensive lesson. I've learned not to consider things losses. They're just annoying, if anything else. But if you take the lesson behind it, it is. So in business, business helps you to see spirituality a lot better. And here's what I, I come to realize. The Apple guy. Okay. Uh, what was his name? What was his name? But uh, Steve Jobs. Okay, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Steve Jobs. I thought when I saw it, was it Steve Jobs? Yes. I thought it said, uh, who is Steve Jobs? I was like, oh, yeah, we're on Jeopardy. But yeah, Steve Jobs. But um, you can have all that stuff. But we all got to go before the king. So in the world of business, we've learned good investments versus bad investments. It's a bad investment to give your life to the enemy and get all the pleasures of the earth then spend, spend eternity in hell because it doesn't balance out. We're talking about a span of up to probably 100 if, you, if, if you're super blessed or so if God just want to give you, he give you a lot of space to repent, you get to 120 years at most on this earth, right? But then you're talking about eternity. It's not a great trade off. It's not a great trade-off. It's actually a horrible trade-off if you really think about it. Even if God offered you a year in hell, it still would be that in hell means to be away from God, to be out the presence of God, right? And it is tormenting. It's torment, it's fire there. The Bible tells us that. But I'm saying is to say, there is nothing, nothing that's worth your soul. There's nothing worth your eternity. There is literally nothing on this earth. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It does. It, it really. It doesn't exist. You can go to hell in a diamond coffin. Nothing is worth your soul. All right. So I'm saying that to say, take the time out. Really, just talk to the Lord tonight. Pray, repent, pray for those who are involved. I wanted to utilize this opportunity to teach a lesson, so that because I know a lot of these young ladies are running toward Diddy and all these other people because they're doors. Every industry has doors. They're running toward these people, and they're because they're they're. They're caught up in the glitz and the glam and they're caught up in all of this. Um, there's this celebrity now, this girl that just hit the scene. I saw somebody did a video about her, about what they're about to do to her in the industry. And I, it's so sad. The girl, um, what was that girl's name? Let me see. What was that child's name? She sang that song. What was it Make Me Sweat? Okay. Make me water. Okay. Tyler. 
Tyler. I saw a lady, a fellow Christian, a fellow, fellow sister in Christ. She had did a video about how beautiful this girl is and how she shot up in the industry all of a sudden and show, you know, videos of, her, you know, pictures of her, you know, um, with all of these different, you know, people like these, these different celebrities in the industry. And she talked about what was about to happen to her. And that's so sad because a lot of women, you know, women, just like men desire to control women, women desire to control men. When it comes down to seduction and being beautiful, women love having the ability to bring men under a trance. Just love it, you know, to, to be born into a body and have guys sitting there looking at you like, women love that kind of stuff. Women love, you know, having men at their mercy. They love having that kind of stuff, just like men love having control or, or being over women. But when people heal and they chase God and they bear the fruit of, and they grow the fruit and they uh, allow that fruit to mature, the, the fruit of self-control, they start, they start losing the desire to control people because they have self-control. They start losing the desire to be controlled by people because there are people out there that actually want to be controlled by people. Right. It is. It's everywhere. You can't even scroll TikTok without seeing it. But she was talking about how the industry works and what they were going to do to her. Um, she was like, they're about to because she's young, she's beautiful. What they were about to do, they're going to take advantage of her. They want to introduce her to basically that's what the industry does. This is, as a female, you're nothing but a sex object. You're nothing but a sex object. So that is the same. Be careful out here, y'all. Understand, that, especially as you, if you're a female, <sighs> there are a lot of men that will try to get to you. There are a lot of men that will sit up there and they'll see you. You ain't nothing but a walking vagina. I'm sorry. That's it. Don't take flattery or don't be flattered when somebody's looking at you and thinking about what they want to do. You don't be flattered with that kind of stuff. But also just make sure you keep God number one. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in wanting marriage, wanting children, wanting houses, cars, riches, and, and platforms that God didn't necessarily call you to or he didn't call you to yet. Just desire him. Ask him, God, give me your give me a heart to desire you. Teach me to pursue you and pursue him by studying his word, getting up, going to church and doing all that. Spend your time, spend time in worship and prayer or what have you. Make him your everything and he'll deal with every other desire. He'll heal you of whatever it causes those desires or if they are good, godly desires, he will give those to you. And he said when he does it, he'll add no sorrow to it. I pray that you were blessed by this. I love you and I will talk to you soon.